So my mom, two brothers, sister and I decided to drive to the Grand Canyon. It was beautiful, but quite terrifying. Anyways, my mom then suggested we go to Page, Arizona to see Horseshoe Bend as she had gone months prior and wanted us to see. So we arrive, it's cool, whatever. So that night, after we see everything, my mom suggests we go look at the stars. Page is tiny. It's in the middle of nowhere. Just desert and mountains for hundreds of miles. We drove to a secluded area where there's almost no lights except for the hues, I guess, of the street lights of a bridge that wasn't too far. And oh my God, it was astonishing. Never seen anything like it. About 20 minutes of messing around, my mom suggests we drive to the Horseshoe Bend. There's no light there other than the sign. It kind of shines up from the bottom so you can see it, you know? So anyways, we get out and are just standing near the car, chatting. Whatever. At this point, we were probably there 40 minutes. And when we first got there, we had heard a cricket. And since it was so silent other than us, we were trying to find it because it sounded so close. Anyways, here's where it gets weird. My brother was sitting about 15 feet behind us on that sign he climbed on top of. And the four of us are in my mom's car. My brother sees a shooting star and yells out. About 15 seconds later, me and my mom see another shooting star at the same time. She then says something along the lines of, bet people see all sorts of crazy weird stuff out here. And as soon as she says this, the cricket stops making that noise. It's dead silent. We're all staring into the distance. There's a white light level to us. Like, someone holding a phone flashlight and it would turn off, then back on a few feet away. And it was moving around in circles slowly. We were literally all hyper-focused on this thing. None of us even said anything. I think we're all thinking, what the actual? I want to say we were staring for 20 seconds when we heard the car door open and slam shut. We all looked at each other and my brother said, what the fuck? Did that door slam shut? We're all baffled. I don't think any of us said anything. My mum walks up to the car and she's bending down, looking into the car. And my brother comes up behind her and shines his flashlight, since you couldn't really see inside. And as soon as he did that, my mum screamed at the top of her lungs and took off running. He's in there. There's someone. Naturally, we all scream. And we're all like, what the fuck? Where are we running to? My oldest brother looked again and there was nothing. And we got in and took the fuck off. We had chills and all couldn't believe it. My mom was spooked as fuck and described it as a pale dude in a driver's seat, hands on the wheel. She couldn't make out any facial features really, but to be fair, she was only peering in that window for about two seconds, tops. We didn't stop talking about it all night. About an hour later, my mom, sister and I were feeling bold and wanted to go back. Rose said no, but finally said fine, but we're not getting out. We left the hotel, go to the car to go back, and as soon as my hand touched that car, I was overcome with a nasty feeling. Came out of nowhere, and I immediately started having a panic attack. I hadn't had one in years. My family was comforting me, and it weirded them out. We didn't end up going back. So this just happened like an hour ago and I just wanted to share it with someone. So I was in my bedroom with my wife, doing the normal kiss goodnight before I went to play video games and nothing was off and my wife fell asleep shortly after. I came back into the bedroom to find these like two and a half foot long sparklers, as in fireworks, that I had laying on top of my hamper to the side of my bed, all laying all over the bed, on top of my wife who was sleeping all around her, but all on the bed and the package as well. I woke her up and asked her what the fuck she was doing with the fireworks. And she mumbled half awake that she didn't do anything and it wasn't her. So I started putting them away. I really wish I had taken a picture, but I didn't think anything of it till I had put them away already. The only way they could have been sprawled out over the bed like that is if someone threw the box onto the bed or like shook them all out over. I went back to playing video games and looked down and noticed I had a missed call from my wife's phone, but no voicemail. I asked her why she called me and she said she didn't. 
She usually recalls the next morning if she called my phone because I'm being too loud. It's only the next room, and I know I can be loud sometimes. The same night I was joking, saying that the ghosts were blowing my money around. We were playing Monopoly. And I think I may have missed something off. I just came to bed now and questioned her again about it. But she didn't remember anything. But even fully awake, she didn't know anything about the sparklers and kind of looked stunned for a second herself. This is only the newest of many strange things that have happened in this building. It's a 120 year old building that used to be an old secret society building. I hear boot prints in the ceiling. I've seen shadows. I've been grabbed physically by my face, ankles and shoulder before here. I just want to leave this place. I've lived here for like eight years and so many things have happened. But it's not just this place. I've experienced things my whole life. I think partially because my mom's a pastor and partially because these things follow me wherever I go. I can't escape it and I can't get away from the paranormal if I try. I've seen over 10 exorcisms and more experiences where I live than the normal person. I haven't been given a choice to believe in these things or not. Some people go their whole lives without experience anything. Others aren't so lucky. I wish I could just live a normal life, but these things follow me either through my life or through what my friends are going through, and they ask me for help. Starting with my personal history. My mother is a Christian pastor. However, my mind is open to all sorts of things. I believe in angels and demons, beings from other dimensions, cryptids. I just look at everything with an open mind. Ever since I was little, my mother said before I was even conceived, a pastor told her she was going to have another child. She believed she was too old for a child and scoffed it off, thinking he was crazy when he told her that her Isaac was coming. Biblical background, Isaac was the son of Moses and Sarah. His wife was too old to conceive a child, yet she did anyways. I've had multiple pastors prophecy over me, saying I was going to do great things and be a leader someday. I still think they're all crazy. But I feel this may have the least something to do with my sensitivity towards the paranormal. All my life, I've had many experiences. Good, but mostly bad. And I just feel the need to share them with people other than my family. I try not to talk about, write, or research about the things that I've experienced, as they could tend to stir things up even more. Even as I write this, I get a feeling of dread, and I hear cracks and bumps on the wall. But I just need to share this with other people, and I want to post something before I lose any more details of things I've experienced in this place. I moved into my apartment with my soon-to-be wife in 2016. We got married in 2017. With her brother, because we couldn't afford the rent by ourselves while still being young adults. It was awesome to finally have a place of our own without the constant parent breathing down our necks. My landlord shared the history of this building with me when we moved in, about how this building was an old oddfellows hall. I found later it was built in 1885, and I didn't really do any research of my own until after things started to happen. Everything was fine for a while, and I can't remember really when all the things started happening. But I do remember when I first felt the heaviness in the air and dread. There's one room in particular that felt more heavy and darker than the rest. The room where my brother-in-law slept. He never used to recall seeing or feeling anything paranormal but he used to sleepwalk and act very strangely late at night. Now he has had many concussions from his time playing hockey, and I'm almost certain that's where this was all coming from. He had some weird episodes, but I'm attributing it to his concussions. Well in his room is where the weird stuff or at least feelings would start. When we'd be in the kitchen, you could see straight down the hall into his bedroom, but sometimes it looked like it was pitch black in there, like a veil of darkness, the only way I could explain it. Like it felt like someone was standing in the doorway, just watching you. Well, after a while, I would try and just keep the door closed to his room, 
so I wouldn't get that feeling. But it helped for a while. In my kitchen, there's a door to our storage room, where I had a fly tying station set up because I'm a huge on fishing and fly fishing. When I'd tie flies in there late at night, I always would leave at 3am. I always have been nocturnal. Because I would always start to feel uneasy and get the same feeling I would from my brother-in-law's room. Now one time that made me think it wasn't just me. is when my cat at the time came into his bedroom with me when I had that dark heavy feeling. I entered his room, the cat with me, and my hair just stood on end like I shouldn't have been there. I looked at my cat and his hair was on end as well. So I know I wasn't the only one feeling it. I closed the door, said a prayer, and left for my bedroom. One of the most intense nights, I was up late playing video games like I always do. I can't remember the time, but it was after 2am. My animals started looking at my apartment door. I heard rustling around out there, and so did they. Kind of like when my wife is home, and she's getting ready to come in. But she was in bed. That's when I started hearing scratching outside my door. My lights inside the room I was in started flickering. I shit you not. And then I saw my dog and my cat simultaneously watching something on my ceiling go around in circles. This ties into something that I will share in a later story. After I got freaked out by my animals watching something that's not there, not a fly, not a bug or anything, I was sitting on my couch watching this happen when all of a sudden... I had what felt like two hands grab my face from behind and pull my head into the couch. As the hands were on my face, my whole face went numb, pale, like no blood was in my face anymore. It's the only way I could describe it. After that, I started to pray harder than I have ever before. I don't go to church or super religious, but I do believe in my faith and I know I have power over that stuff. I don't remember anything else happening after that other than a heavy feeling in the air and I ran to bed with my wife and explained what happened to her. We prayed and went to sleep. The next morning I found outside our apartment handprints and scratches on our walls. The landlords painted it all when we moved in and wouldn't be the type to smear up what they did with dirt. So it's very odd that these would appear after the night I heard something outside. The scratches on the wall of the hallway outside our apartments were right where our neighbor's head laid on the inside of the wall in his bed. I know, because he showed me once when I went in to look at furniture he was giving away. I never thought to ask him if he experienced anything, because I didn't want to freak him out, although I regret not asking. I wish that was where this ended, but it's not. One other instance is when me and my wife were in bed together, just reading and whatever we were doing, so we fell asleep. I like to play my Switch. When I felt the heaviness again, but that's weird, as, as soon as I felt it, she looked at me and told me she was scared, like something was in the room. I felt it too. This was the most I've ever been scared. I felt like something entered our room and started coming towards the foot of our bed with ill intentions. I was so scared. My body was literally shaking and I could barely even mutter a prayer. Like when you're in a dream and you try to tell, but nothing comes out. I prayed along the lines of, you're not welcome here. We're children of God and we're protected by his stripes. You're not allowed here and you cannot hurt us. Get out. I struggled to even get those words out, but I just continued to pray for a peaceful night and sleep. That was about the end of the worst of it. Granted, Weird stuff still happens, and weird things still make sounds. We'll hear someone with boots walking around in our attic. We see shadows peek around the doorway to the hallway that you can see our brother's room from. It's connected to our living room. Sometimes the shadows are white, sometimes they're black. Sometimes I get a weird feeling in the room I got grabbed in, and I know it's time to go to bed. I try not to stay up past 2 or 3 a.m. anymore. My brother-in-law has since moved out and my wife's sister now lives with us. And we've gotten phone calls from her where she said she saw a white shadow move past the living room doorway in the hallway and other shadows. We're looking to move this summer, not because of these things, but we have outgrown our apartment and we need a yard for our dog to run around. 
But I'll miss this place. As fascinated as I am with the paranormal, I would never want to live with the things I've lived with. I own and operate a movers company. On many occasions, we're sent to homes where the owners have passed away. The homes are older than 100 years, and the furniture has been passed down many generations. On one move from Texas to a 250-year-old home in Virginia, the house was renovated to look just like it did when built. Small ceilings, visible beams, and the hardwood floor were original. The new owner even showed us bullet holes on the outside of the house dating way back. We arrived around 4pm and the owner told us where he wanted all the furniture, then left and we got to work on loading. Right off the bat, we felt very uneasy in the home. Surrounded by mountains and trees, the nearest neighbours are about a mile away. There were three of us and I was inside laying rugs before the other two brought in furniture. It got dark quick as the sun went behind the mountains. I heard footsteps on the second floor and figured it was one of the guys going to the only working bathroom. When I walked outside, the two guys were coming in with the headboard for a bed. I asked if they were upstairs and they both said they were taking a smoke break while I lay rugs. I shrugged it off as just the house being old. It's now pitch black outside and the house is a historic monument to the city. Meaning, you could put so-and-so type of doors, lights, knobs, etc. We were basically working with flashlights and candles with how the house lights were. We were assembling the living room area, and when we all hear a door slam at the back of the house, we figured it was a draft, but went to check it out anyway. These doors are original and easily weigh 80 to 100 pounds each. We all start to feel unsettled, as I told them about the footsteps earlier. We start to unload the truck and assemble and place all the furniture as fast as we can. Once we get upstairs, the mood changed drastically. We all felt very nervous and as if we were being watched. While assembling a bed frame from the corner of my eye, I would see shadows going back and forth. All of a sudden, we hear a loud bang upstairs. I went to look and it was my drill I had left on its side on a table that fell to the floor. We all rush outside for a cigarette and see what needs to be finished to leave quickly. All that's left is the footboard of the bed I was assembling and to take an armoire to the second floor. We plan accordingly and we're in and out within 20 minutes. There was no way someone could have come into the property because the owner had motion lights placed on the trees all around. And the only way on when we were outside and the homeowner was at a hotel 45 minutes away where I left him the keys. It's been about three years since that job, but we still talk about it to this day. First incident. So a few days back, I was on a bus going back home. An ambulance passed us by. I had an urge to cry out, like ball out. I was so overwhelmed and had tears in my eyes, taking deep breaths to control my emotions. I couldn't explain it because one, I had nobody close to me die in my life yet, two, no trips to the hospitals, and three, no emergencies that involve ambulances. I've passed through many, many ambulances in the past and have always prayed that the person, whoever is in the ambulance, to be safe, but such a feeling never occurred. The second incident. Last night, in my roommate's perspective, I was sleeping, very normal for me, and she was asking me to stop it, thinking I was awake. And I did stop talking apparently. The same thing repeated two or three times again and it stopped. Then I gasped loudly, like inhaled, and didn't exhale for at least a few seconds. And she said she could see my chest physically rise when I inhaled and fall when exiled. I even called my mom as if crying for help. She called me many times, and after a little time I replied, I'm okay, I'm okay, and went back to sleep. In my perspective, the moment I heard her call my name desperately, I felt like something or someone was standing near the leg side of my bed. 
It was completely black, and as far as I remember, the silhouette had two hands and two legs and one head. I waved my hand once and away to make it go away, as if it would dissipate into the air. And I said, I'm okay, I'm okay, to find my roommate and fell asleep. I remember feeling absolutely scared and terrified, really desperate to just go away from that feeling. I remember getting goosebumps and telling myself it's nothing and I shouldn't pay attention to it. This evening, we were talking about what exactly happened. And she told me her side of the story. Even then, when I thought of what happened, I got goosebumps all over my body. Got chills and my heart was beating so fast. It's possible all these physiological reactions occurred because I perceived the situation as scary. But I'm just mentioning it so I don't miss out any details. These things have never happened to me before. What are your thoughts on it? If it's any way or has any relation to this, I usually do tarots, but haven't done it in a week or more. And these incidents have happened during the week. I hadn't done any tarot. I don't do any other spiritual or paranormal stuff. I'm usually a very positive person, but I've been stressed lately because of work. Last night, I had one of the strangest experiences of my life. Let me give some backstory before I get into what happened. In 2019, I purchased my first home. Luck really seemed to be on our side, as my fiancé and I had been looking for a year and houses were flying off the market. In September of 2018, my mom's neighbour had gone into a nursing home and the house listed for sale. There was an estate sale held in the home in December, in which my mom and I attended and I felt like they were asking way too much for this incredibly outdated house. March rolls around, and the house still hasn't sold, but they dropped the price down a bit, and my fiancé and I decided to make an offer. They countered, and we accepted. Life was great. We were homeowners and had the best neighbours in the world, my mom and stepdad. It felt like such a blessing for us to have my parents next door, especially since my fiancé and I have two young kids aged one and six at the time we purchased the house. I also work opposite shifts of my fiancé, so if he needs to run to the store or whatever while I'm working, my mom or stepdad would come over and watch them for 20 minutes. They were there to help with every detail, from doing a complete living room remodel to borrowing us tools and whatever we needed. My stepdad would even help with our lawn care, and my fiancé would help with their snow removal. In December of 2020, my stepdad started getting sick. He had vertigo that wouldn't go away. His doctor prescribed him mesalazine, and after weeks and weeks of it not going away, his doctor referred him to an ENT. The ENT was under the impression that he was suffering from mid -aries. A week or two after seeing the ENT, he woke up one morning, unable to walk. So we went back to his doctor yet again, and his doctor thought maybe he had a stroke in his cerebellum, so we sent him in for an MRI. The MRI unfortunately showed a tumour on his cerebellum the size of a large grape. They also found tumours on both adrenal glands and one in his lung. The diagnosis was stage 4 adenocarcinoma. Three months to the day after his diagnosis, my stepdad passed away in the comfort of his home with my mum and I by his side and holding his hand. I was there for the whole process between his hospital stay, rehab, and then finally him coming home on hospice. I stayed up with him the night it became clear that he was dying. I made all the phone calls to the hospice and the family after he passed. I wrote every word of his obituary. Living next door, I've been able to spend a lot of time with my mother and help her through the grief of it all since he passed. It's become very clearly evident that it was more of a blessing for my mom to have me next door than it was for me to have her next door. I should also add that within a few days of my stepdad's passing, I believe he sent me a sign. My fiancé and I were sitting outside and saw a hummingbird trying to feed from my sage plant that was blooming. I've never seen a hummingbird in the city I live in. It's too busy. We're not near any wooded areas. In fact, we're a block away from a very busy road. 
My mom and stepdad used to live in the next city over, and they lived next to a huge field, and there were woods not too far from their house. She used to get hummingbirds frequently, and my stepdad loved to watch them. When they moved to the house my mom is currently living in now, she tried for several years with the hummingbird feeder, and not once did she get one. So it was quite a surprise to see this one right after his passing. So here's where my current story begins. This past Tuesday was the one year anniversary of my stepdad's official cancer diagnosis. My mom has been having a really tough week because of it, and I think she's finally entering the anger stage of grief. On Wednesday, I was home with the kids. My fiance works regular business hours and I work nights. I have a really weird eating schedule because I keep odd hours to begin with. He came home from work a little after five like normal and I wasn't feeling right. Lightheaded, kind of dizzy. I sent him out for food thinking I just needed to eat something because I'd been up for about five hours and hadn't eaten yet. So we had dinner and I still wasn't feeling well. I was laying in bed at 3am and the whole room was just spinning. I was starting to feel really nauseous and it hit me that maybe I was having a migraine but without the headache. So I woke my other half up and had him get me an Imitrex because I couldn't focus on anything but the spinning at the time, let alone trying to walk down a flight of stairs to find some beds. Thursday, I woke up still dizzy, but it was short-lived and went away after an hour or so. Is where it gets really interesting. Friday, I woke up and felt fine still. I was scheduled to work that night and needed to wash my hair and do all the things to get ready for my work weekend. I have pink and purple hair currently, and to keep the colour from fading, I wash it in cold water by draping my head under the faucet of the bathtub versus taking a freezing cold shower. So mid-hair washing, the world starts spinning again. I gracefully managed to stumble my way over to my mom's house because I knew she would help guide me through that manoeuvre you could do for Vertigo. And she did, and she offered me some meclizine, which is basically like Dramamine. She still had some of her medicine cabinet from my stepdad when he was experiencing Vertigo on a daily basis. So my mom proceeds to tell me I can't go into work like this. I can't safely drive there. And I'm like, ah oh, crap, she's right. So I made the decision to call her to work. About two hours later, I took her up on the Meclizine offer, knowing I had already called her to work. So if I got drowsy, no big deal. I'm not going in. Around 8pm, I couldn't keep my eyes open any longer. So I took a nap on the couch. I woke up from some strange dreams around 10pm. My fiancé was watching some serial killer docuseries, so that explained my dreams. And I woke up feeling overheated and decided to go out to our breezeway to cool off a bit and wake up. When I hit the stairs to my back entry, which also leads to my basement, something smelled weird, like it was burning. The smell was overpowering. I looked around and didn't see smoke anywhere, but started calling for my fiancé, worried it was in the basement. Three steps down I could handle, but not the 10 or 12 to go down the basement while I was still dizzy, and now feeling drugged out and drowsy from the med I'd taken. So he goes and checks out the basement, and says the smell stops midway down the stairs. It's not coming from the breeze while you're outside. We have several switches in this back entry. One that powers an outside light pole in our side yard, one for the light in the breezeway, and one for the basement, then one that turns the power on and off to the garage, which is always on because of the garage door opener. So he starts checking the switches, and the one for the power to the garage is hot. He runs back downstairs and flips the breaker to that switch, and grabs a screwdriver to take the plate off, and the switch is frying. He says to me, thank god you noticed this. Two hours later, this whole experience was kind of weighing on my mind really heavily, and I kept thinking it was such a good thing that I didn't go into work tonight, because who knows how much longer we would have until an electrical fire started. And that's when it hit me. I was home because I was having the same symptoms my stepdad was having from his brain tumour before his past. Is this him warning me? Protecting my family and I? My fiancé replaced the switch this morning, and I think we'll be calling an electrician to come check everything else out. 
I've never in my life had an experience on this level before. I woke up today feeling about 80% better as well. This happened when I was seven years old. I'm sharing because my older brother reminded me of it. Now that I'm 24, and now I can't get it out of my head. This was very traumatic for me because after this event, a bunch of other things started to happen. This is how it started. Growing up and now, I live in a haunted state. I lived five miles away from the most victorious haunted forest. My mom used to tell my brothers and I about what she would hear walking by the forest, the murders that happen, and how she used to see pukwudgies. My older brother, 11 at the time, let's call him D, and I were watching TV in the living room. It was dark outside. It must have been a new moon. If you're sitting on the couch and look to your right, you would see the glass sliding door, which viewed the backyard. Mind you, it was an acre lawn and tall trees lined the perimeter. I was tired and decided to get my ritual glass of milk before to bed. When I stood up and saw what was glaring at me through the glass door. It was tall, taller than the fucking door. It was skinny in the torso, but its chest was broad. It was white, with tall ears. I want to say it looked like the white version of Donnie Darko. I was about 15 feet from the glass door. I froze. It didn't move. It just kept looking at me. It couldn't have been anyone else because we lived in the middle of the woods. I started calling for my brother's name, but D wasn't answering me. I started to get louder, now calling for my mom. Her room was on the other side of the couch, so she was there in a heartbeat. She looked at the back door, looked at Dee, then told me to just sit back down. I couldn't understand why I was the only one freaking the fuck out. I laid on the couch, facing away from the glass door. Dee put a blanket on me, and we both fell asleep on the couch. Well, 2021, Dee calls me from jail. He's been in and out since I was 13. This is how the conversation went. D, hey, can I ask you something? Me, what's up? Do you remember that night? What night? That night where you were freaking out. We were young. Remember that tall, scary looking shit that was at the back door? I have a flashback of that night. Look, I had a dream about it last night. I wanted to tell you that I saw it too. I was too scared to do anything. Mom saw it also. The conversation ended because he only had so much time on the phone. I felt relief that I knew I wasn't just having a schizophrenic hallucination episode, but my body went numb from the memory of being so scared. I told my SO about it. He's my best friend. He told me that I came face to face with a Wendigo and how he wasn't surprised because of the small country town I lived in. When I looked up what a Wendigo was, my heart sank. That's what I saw. It's been a year since I was reminded of it. I believe it still follows me. My siblings and I grew up in a pretty traumatic environment. When my oldest sibling, five years older than me, became a teenager, they became a very real risk to my safety. Their bedroom was right next to mine and I was regularly threatened with things that would be done to me in my sleep. One particular bad night, a figure showed up in my bedroom doorway. He looked like the guy from the movie Green Mile. He was massive and wearing overalls. I could see him as clearly as I could see anyone, but no one else could. He freaked me out and my parents eventually had to get a beaded curtain from my doorway and make another sibling swap bedrooms with the oldest. But looking back as an adult, I think he was protecting me. When he was in my doorway, no one ever came in my room. My volatile sibling would be calmer and their threats would fade. A couple of years ago, we had someone enter our home while I was asleep. I woke up to someone opening my bedroom door. That night, the figure reappeared in my doorway. I hadn't seen or even thought about him in years. But that night, there he was, clear as day. I think this figure was there to protect me and help lessen the trauma I was subjected to as a child. 
My mum remembers me being so afraid of the figure in my doorway and that I could always clearly describe him. Even now, 25 plus years on, I can see him clearly in my mind. I wish I wasn't so afraid whenever he showed up. A mate of mine in recent years said he was a poltergeist and if my sibling had followed through on my threat, I would have seen real evil out of him. But I really don't know. So this happened a few years ago. But first, a bit about my uncle, Paulinho. He was an alcoholic, died of cancer, and was battling with alcoholism his whole life. He started drinking in his teens, and this kept going and turned into an addiction. My cousin's life was pretty hard, as my uncle neglected him through his infancy, and money was an issue. My uncle developed throat cancer in his 40s and had to quit drinking to have a chance. He actually managed to stop drinking and smoking and fought the hell out of the cancer. He then went 20 years without drinking or smoking until he developed a new cancer and this time he didn't have the strength to fight the addiction and died drinking and smoking. He was a loving man, funny and really helpful, but he was stigmatized within the family because of his addiction. I was living with him and my grandmother at the time as I was attending college in the city where they lived. My uncle used to help her as she can't walk, but he wasn't doing much since the disease came back, and I picked up on taking care of her alongside one of my aunts. I tried to be supportive for him, but I know how hard it was for him to deal with the addiction and the cancer again. I really cared for him, and the worst was feeling everyone draw away from him as he was slowly dying. At the funeral, he was in the coffin in the middle of the room, and we were all around him. When the time came, People started talking about him and I couldn't keep my eyes off of him. He had a neutral look, but you could distinguish sadness in his face, especially in his mouth. Everyone that spoke said good things about him, but they all mentioned his disease or the addiction, or how it was hard dealing with that, the sadness of watching him go back to it, etc. I wanted to say only good things about him, but I had no strength. But after my cousin spoke, his wife started talking and only said fun things about him. The times he helped her and how he was like a father she never had. And some funny situations. It was the only time that I took my eyes off of him because the speech was so moving. And because it was really representative of his good nature. What I wanted to say, but didn't manage to. When I looked back at him, he had a distinct smile on his face. He seemed genuinely happy at her words and how everybody was laughing and remembering him in a good light. Not throwing any criticism or paying attention to his flaws. It really amused me, and I'm a big non-believer of life after death, but that's something I really can't explain. I wish I could say it was only my perception because of the moment, but I genuinely saw a smile on his face that faded away a few moments later. Around 10 or so years ago, my little brother was about two years old, just learning how to speak and develop into the toddler stage, and I was around 12 or so years old, being the oldest sibling, with my two middle siblings in between me and my youngest brother that I'm talking about here. We had a family party celebrating my birthday that year, and the extended family was over for dinner and cake and presents, all sharing stories, watching the game on TV, etc., then my mom and aunt decided to get out the old family album from when they were kids and talk about old memories and share them with those kids who were not alive for it back then. They came across a few pictures of my late uncle Chris who died before I was born of cancer and was really close to my mom's siblings, my mom especially. I only ever heard stories growing up about him from my mother and other members of the family but never got to meet him and my little brother certainly never met him and also barely comprehended or heard any stories or seen any pictures of him up until that point in his life, being only two years old at the time. My mom pulled out a picture of Chris in his graduation uniform, and before she could even start explaining the picture, my little brother looked at the picture and started smiling and laughing a little bit and said, hey, it's Chrissy. Chrissy was a nickname given to Chris by some people in the family as well as his close friends back when he was alive. 
and not even what my mother referred to him as even when talking to me growing up. After he said that, my mom and aunt just looked at each other, mildly creeped out at first, followed by amazement and a deep debate about how the hell that was possible. As well as my grandma coming in being very spiritual, like I bet him and Chris are good friends. That would be just like Chris too. I was confused as hell myself, not understanding how he recognised him without ever seeing him before. Being a young two-year-old who could barely even form coherent sentences the majority of the time. I also have quite a lot of stories with my younger sister, as well as faint memories from my own childhood that have really convinced me of this theory furthermore. But I'm curious what other people think about this, or what other similar experiences people have. When I was small, I used to live in a big old house, in a small village with my parents and my grandma. The house was at least like a hundred years old, and we bought it from the local priest who had lived there before. Normally, I didn't experience many scary things, just a few weird sounds. I'd note that I've always been scared of the dark, even now as a 20 year old. I hate being alone in the dark, and I write it off in this house. As a kid, I had nightmares and recurring dreams very often, and I still do to this day. And exactly because of this, since my bedroom used to be right next to my grandma's bedroom from the right and my parents' bedroom for the left, I would always open the door to either room at night to feel safe by their small sounds and the TV light shining in. This night, it wasn't that late, probably around 7 to 8 p.m., and I was playing Smite on my laptop. The door to my grandma's room was closed, but on the other side, the door to my parents' bedroom was halfway open. From my desk I was sitting at, I could see straight into their room. It was dark inside. My parents weren't home yet, but I was expecting them to arrive any second. At one point, I heard someone in the room, so I turned my head, and I saw something move in there. It was this slightly glowing white figure that I mistook for my mom somehow. Without a thought, I said, hey mom, but got no response. When I doubled back to check the room, it was absolutely still and dark inside. I freaked the fuck out and ran to my grandma's bedroom, but I never actually told anyone in my family what I saw, because I was sure I was just seeing things because of looking at my laptop screen for too long. Years later, we moved out with my parents, and it was only my grandma left in that big house alone. She told me sometimes she would hear footsteps in her room going around in a circle, when she was taking a nap in the late afternoon hours. But as soon as she opened her eyes, the noises would stop. Sadly, my grandma recently passed away, so I couldn't discuss it with her further. And to be honest, I'm kind of uneasy thinking about going back to that house. We'll most likely sell it if we gain ownership. Back in the year 2012, I had a heart transplant. Ever since, on occasion, something strange would happen. Usually when I was about to do something I probably shouldn't be doing or mention the donor's name. May 2021. The first time I noticed something weird was when I was lying in bed and the door to the office adjacent to my bedroom was closing by itself. It was slowly shutting and I dismissed it as the AC turning on or something like that. But I remembered that the carpet in the office has a lump in it, and you have to apply a good bit of force to the door to get it over the lump in the carpet. I got up and searched my house to see if anyone was up, and they weren't. November 22. After that, I was on the phone, and I happened to be discussing the donor. Almost instantly after seeing the donor's name, the lamp next to me started blinking off and on. This is strange, but I could chalk that up to a loose connection in the lamp. January 2022, I was hanging out with friends and they asked me to retell my story about the heart transplant. Shortly after, we were messing around and took a video. However, when we replayed the video, an orb went across the screen and completely covered my friend's face. It's probably just dust. March 2022, 
Today I was working on my car out in the garage and I had to get up under the car to pop the oil drain plug out. I was feeling lazy and didn't put jack stands under the car. Right as I was about to slide up under the car, a wrench fell off the top of the toolbox. The top of the toolbox has a rubber mat to stop tools from falling off. That was the last straw that made me make a post about this. I'm a complete skeptic when it comes to ghosts, but I thought you guys would at least find it interesting. Even though professionally I'm a chaplain who deals with the supernatural, I'm surrounded by people who load and assume stuff about my experiences. I don't know who I helped that has something seriously powerful attached to them, which is scary enough as it is. I tried to dismiss this kind of stuff, and my first rationalisation was bugs, but I can't really ignore or dismiss it anymore. There's a room we're next to that I've written about. I still follow my practices, warding with prayer, crosses, incense, bibles, but there are two spots of faltering. Number one is when I'm at my computer desk. My legs are up against the wall to the creepy room. Several times throughout the hours I'm sitting at my computer, I can feel a hand grab or slightly yank my foot. It's cold. It's also incredibly annoying. The other spot is when I'm sleeping and my leg is uncovered. I get small yanks as I'm falling asleep. Or some that wake me up. Same deal. Ice cold for the briefest second. Really weak grab or yank. And then nothing. I woke up with the random scratches up my leg one morning, but I'm going to assume it was my dog. I'm a chaplain for a community church. I deal with many things. One of the aspects of my role is dealing with the spiritual world. I'm specialised in dealing with what we call spiritual warfare, demons or dark spirits. Keep in mind, I'm not trying to convert or evangelise you, but it's better to know what opinions you have. My advice will be both Christian and general, and comes from a place of study and lifelong interaction with the spiritual world. First, what's a chaplain? A chaplain is a church minister or representative who works in the community, or in the secular or non-religious world, to give mental, physical or spiritual advice. The advice is often non-religious, although the chaplain is religious. Chaplains will use all the tools in their toolkit to help someone, which includes counselling, referring to health services, or engaging in religious support like prayer, blessing or protection. With the person if they're willing, on behalf of the person when they're not present if they're not willing. The best verse to describe a chaplain is, always be prepared to give an answer to those who ask you to give a reason for the hope that you have. But do this with gentleness and respect. Let's get into this. Always look for the scientific or rational explanation first. Never first assume it's spiritual until you have the inexplicable. And search hard for logical reasons for signs. Tick all of the boxes in order to be certain. This is a big category I will not be able to fully cover. There'll be some stuff missing. Here's the general signs I've seen in person. Foul, inexplicable smells. Footsteps, scratching, knocking. Temperature fluctuation. Whispering. Feeling of being watched. Inexpl inexplicable movement of items. Small, visible movements like pulling on blankets or knocking items over. Physical touching, as in being touched, poked, prodded or grabbed, etc. And sleep paralysis. Hauntings of an individual. This is much more difficult and very complex. A complete change in attitude or behaviour. Growling or groaning for no reason. Sudden memory loss with no reason. Inexplicable anger and mood shifts. Hostility to spiritual practice or people. Foaming in the mouth. Sudden substance abuse. Standing and staring for long periods of time. Addictions. Dangerous and self-harming attitudes and behaviour. If it knocks or calls, do not answer. One of the most common beliefs across religions and beliefs is that dark spirits or demons 
require permission to possess a personal area or to tether to someone and haunt them. But this permission doesn't always need to be explicit. Dark spirits are infamously tricky. Knocking on something and having it open for you is the most simple and common form of invitation there is. Like being let through someone's front door after knocking, the invitation is implicit. They'll also do things like imitate loved ones, or target children because children have an incredibly active imagination. Not to worry you, but sometimes an imaginary friend is not so imaginary. But if it calls to you, or knocks, my suggestion is always to rebuke. Rebuke and ward. My rebuke is, I do not permit you. You are not welcome here. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. For non-religious rebuking, obviously take out the in the name of Jesus stuff. Warding is when you put crosses or protections on doorways, or regular blessings and cleansing. Non-religious warding would be making sure to shut and even lock all doors. Never, under any circumstance, try to communicate with these spirits. Some spirits are benevolent, but if it's trying to trick you, it's evil and has to be rebuked. Some examples I've seen have been knocking on windows, porch doors, walls, bedroom doors, or even front doors. Or pretending to be a loved one calling out to elicit a come here. All of these instances require strength, courage, and firm words. Sinister spirits love fear. So find whatever it is that bolsters you and use it. Obviously for me, it's Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. White sage is not a cure-all. So often, we see people advocating the use of white sage. But this can be a bit of a misnomer. White sage is a native North American practice. Dark spirits respect authority. We don't know why, and there are many theories. But for whatever reason, the spiritual world respects authority. If you're not Native American and you wave white sage around to cleanse a house, it will not fully do so because you don't have the authority to practice. It's also because white sage is for certain kinds of cleansings, more responsive in nature, like someone dying in a house. For an alternative example, as a Western chaplain, I'll use frankincense and myrrh, and it's worked every time I've used it to cleanse a house or bless someone. When I was younger, I tried sage, and I worsted the symptoms of haunting, hence the investigation into it. Dark spirits are angry and malevolent, and if you show you know they're there, and you're trying to get rid of them, but don't actually get rid of them, you'll anger them. My suggestion for a cleansing is to find a spiritual elder. A spiritual elder could be a chaplain from a local church, or it could be a shaman from the local tribe. Either way, you need someone with authority who knows what they're doing. Don't try and fix these things alone by essentially co-opting another culture or religious practice. You don't have the authority to do so. However, I will say you can still rebuke. This point is absolutely about the use of symbols, herbs, incense, and other cleansing rituals. You can still command something to leave you and your house or family alone. Immature interaction with the spiritual world is hugely dangerous. Things follow you. It's the same old trope, but it's a trope for a reason. A seance in a graveyard, a Ouija board at a party, going to a haunted abandoned building in the night. All these things we love to do to scare ourselves. All of these things are intensely dangerous. I can't tell you how many times my support has basically been a spiritual inv investigation to find and solve a cause. If you know where it came from, or what it's connected to, much easier to deal with a malevolent spirit. That being said, it's also one of the most common reasons I've seen for hauntings. People have invited the interest of a spirit with their silly behaviour, and it's just not worth the risk. If you want to experience it, experience it vicariously through videos, and let other people take the risk. If you do muck around, you know what I'm going to say. Find yourself a chaplain or spiritual leader. Get yourself in your living environment blessed, rebuke, and ward. Of course, my first suggestion is going to be don't muck around with it. Also, to cover here, things like living on native burial grounds, haunted forests and graveyards, all require specific interventions. You need to know the problem. For example, living on a native burial ground or battleground, 
A grievance has occurred and there are angry spirits. Anything to do with wrongdoing toward the native population requires native reconciliation, ritual, and intervention. Benevolent spirits. These definitely exist. You'll find conflicting information surrounding benevolent spirits and what to do with them. But personally, my suggestion will be to move them on. Sometimes they are malevolent spirits up to no good and tricking you. But sometimes they are the spirits of loved ones. However, they don't belong here anymore. Grief can be a powerful tool. So too can love. If you think it's truly the benevolent spirit of a loved one, then if you love them, let them go. Give them peace and freedom, bless them, and cleanse the environment. Magic and witchcraft. As a Christian chaplain, my job is to tell you to avoid this. However, the reality is that plenty of people engage in this area of the supernatural perfectly safely. If you are a Wiccan or a determined practitioner, my only request is that you find someone in your faith to mentor you so that you can do it safely. People messing around in witchcraft without having an elder to guide them is another horrendously dangerous way of inviting malevolent spirits. And I admit, the same can be said about many Christian practices. Sleep paralysis or supernatural? This is probably the most common question I see, but there's a relatively simple answer. Is there anything else going on other than sleep paralysis? While sleep paralysis can be terrifying and a tool of dark spirits, sometimes it is simply sleep paralysis. Sleep paralysis is when your conscious and subconscious have not fully reconnected, but you're awake, but not yet physically in control. Supernatural occurrences usually bring in a whole raft of other things. Unable to sleep because it feels like you're being watched. Others telltale signs of hauntings like light switches turning on and off in the night, footsteps, temperature fluctuations. If you're not sure, my suggestion is to sleep on your side as often as possible. If it's sleep paralysis, it'll still happen. If it's supernatural, it'll stop because you can no longer so easily be pinned. The single most helpful piece of advice, be courageous and remember that fear and anger are the same emotion with different responses. Current evidence indicates they're from the same part of the brain. The purpose for many cultural war dancers was to turn fear into anger. For the Christians, it's a lot easier or any faith practitioner really. For me, when I'm confronted with something spiritual, I stick to my go-to, I do not permit you, you are not welcome, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, I command you to leave. If you can't muster the ability to be clear, logical or concise, then I honestly recommend you get angry and let it be known. How fucking dare this thing come into your house and fuck with you? How dare it follow you around and make your life harder? Tell it to fuck off. It's an old church, but not like cool old. It's not Victorian. It was built in the 40s, but it's a community church in a poor area. And we've seen some broken souls come through the doors. We're open to any and everyone. We're probably the most accepting church I know of, but this does result in a lot of sad stories. I'm a chaplain, but I don't force my beliefs on anyone. And I'm not here to evangelize you. I work alone in the church often, it's a low paying job. I'm the only full time worker for the church, but I do it because my background is in working with kids and young people who are on a trajectory to join a gang. I have a degree in youth development, masters in community leadership, and I'm trained in institutionalized psychology and chaplaincy. I don't do it for the money. I have a belief that our church is either haunted or targeted by spirits because of the work we do in the community. We're grassroots. Humility is key. And we're not afraid of spiritual warfare, which mostly looks like counselling people who are scared, giving out food boxes to the needy, blessing new buildings or places of death, lots of different spiritual things. My belief is that as a consequence of the people we help and the things we do, we draw negative spiritual attention to ourselves. I got a video the other day. I don't want it to go viral. I'll get in trouble with my church. But it was the usual. Doors opening and closing themselves, and heavy footsteps in the church area while I was alone, and all doors and windows closed. I work in a small chapel office off to the side, 
The main building is usually locked up for tight security reasons. Even has a different alarm. To start with, my real parents died in a car accident, and I got adopted from when I was around the age of four. I've always seen this tall, dark figure at the end of my bed or corner of the room in my dreams. It didn't have a hat or brim, and it was always darker than the room it was in. It happens about three times a week, or if I go anywhere new or overnight. Each house I've lived in, I've seen it. If I go to a friend's house overnight, then it would be there too. I always thought it was just me being crazy and overthinking things. There was no way I could tell people, and I didn't want to come off as that weirdo who sees things. While I was dating my husband, I saw it as this. I didn't say anything. We're now married, and we have our five-month-old. Literally the other day, I told him a weird dream I had of the black, tall thing coming up the stairs. It opening the door and just staring at me and our baby. He turned white. He said he'd seen the exact same dream last night. We shared the same dream. Upon talking, he admitted he'd seen it for a while. He only saw it when he started dating me, and obviously sees it often now in whatever house we're in. We've recently moved to, and he saw it the first night. In the hospital I gave birth in, because of the big C word, my husband had to go home on his own the very first night. I got moved to a ward and nurses would come check on myself and baby, come do my blood pressure and just take care of you until the morning. I was going home the next day. I saw whatever it was just standing outside the curtain rail of the hospital bed, watching us. One nurse came to take my vitals and I heard her gasp and she shoved on the lights, blinding me in the process. She apologised quickly and said she's had a long night and apologised again for blinding me. She did a full look of the room before she left and made sure to leave the bedside table lamp on. The weird thing that happened was the first night of me being out of hospital and at home with our newborn baby. It was there in the corner. He said it saw it look at me and then look down and into the crib and then just turned to leave. I'm now currently scared because it's validated that something is following me. I don't think it's evil. I think it's watching over me and now our baby. This literally just happened last night. It's funny, because I've never really been afraid of paranormal stuff. But in the heat of the moment, I pretty much froze. We had just turned off the lights and had just settled in bed when this happened. Seriously, I literally was just thinking, thank goodness we're finally in bed at a decent hour and I can relax when it happened. I noticed that my husband was kind of stirring around a little, but then all of a sudden, he rolled over towards me hella fast like. He grabbed my arm as he was sitting bolt up tight and he said, Holy shit! Holy shit, there's a bad spirit in here or something. Now, you've got to know that I was just all like, what? Jumping out of bed. While still clinging hard to my arm, he flipped on the light. Then, his eyes got huge and his mouth dropped agape as his face suddenly turned pale. He was staring behind me. So I turned to look and didn't see anything. The dogs were now up and looking around, utterly sleepy-eyed and confused. But they didn't seem to be reacting to anything. What? What? I demanded, ripping my arm free and shaking his shoulders. He pointed over my shoulder and with red, teary eyes and a shaky voice, he stammered, There's a black orb thing and it's coming towards me. I'm not sure what the fuck is actually what to even think I said something like, don't see shit. There's nothing there. Yes, there is. Ah, he yelled as he actually threw one of his arms up in a defensive gesture. I honestly wondered for a moment if he was seriously losing his shit or something. But then I remembered that in his parents' old house, they just recently sold, he sensed a ghost and saw an orb. I saw an orb in that house as well. Since we've been together, there's been a few instances of him seeing or noticing things like that. On the other hand, not so much. So in that moment, as I watched his arm go up like someone was throwing a punch at him, I glimpsed the look of pure and total fear in his eyes. I knew he wasn't losing it or fucking around right then and there. 
He started begging me for help, but I didn't know what the fuck to do. He asked for a Bible or something, but I informed him they were all in storage. Then he jumped back, bumping into the wall and threw open the front door, backing out. It's, it's, it's like trying to hit me in the head or something. Ah, he yelled, throwing up both arms in defense. It's coming at me. Please, please help me, he yelled as he gripped onto both of my arms that time. He just started holding his head and then repeating, Stop, I'll stop, I swear, I'll stop. Jesus is my Lord and Saviour, and so on. I totally froze. I tried praying, but I just kept telling him I don't know what to do and not to acknowledge it or fear it. As I fear that they fed on that kind of stuff. That went on for over an hour. I eventually burned some sage and tried saying a few words. People used a frickin' shell or something under the sage like in the movies, because that shit falls everywhere and burns holes and shit. Anyways, after about an hour and a half, I turned off the light and we clung to each other in bed, until he stopped shaking and eventually fell asleep. To properly understand this story, you have to know that my mother suddenly passed away when she was 50, leaving me with her house. Since she didn't like my boyfriend at the time, she had tried to get me to promise that I would never let him live with me in her house after she died. We were smoking together, so she joked that she would haunt me if I did let him live there. This took place a year or two before she actually died. I wouldn't make that promise to her because I didn't think I could keep it. Anyways, a couple of weeks after she died, my boyfriend was at my house, which as I mentioned was formerly my mom's. He was sitting on the couch in the spot that my mom always sat, day and night. As he was sitting there, he was saying how he thought it was stupid that my mom said he couldn't live there with me. Just as I was going to tell him that he probably shouldn't be sitting there talking shit, my cat, who was by me rubbing up on a portable kitchen island, which stood up on wheels, suddenly stopped dead. The cat then turned around and put her face and upper body close to the floor in order to see under the portable island and into the living room where my boyfriend was sitting on the couch. The hair on her back stood up, her tail puffed way up and then she began to growl a very low growl. It was as if she knew and understood what he had said and was now witnessing the manifestation of the consequences which were unbeknownst to us in the living world. No matter what I did, she would not freaking move. She just kept staring at him and growling in a low growl. I was wide-eyed and staring at the shit. All I could say is, what the fuck? My boyfriend was all like, holy shit, what do I do? I said, I have no freaking clue. This lasted for about three or so minutes, until the cat finally just trotted out of the room. I did try and take a picture to see if anything would maybe show up, but there was nothing in the picture. I don't know what the hell that was about, but I have an inkling... It may have been my stubborn ass mom. As I was about to go to sleep last night around 3am, I heard my door open and someone walk in. Naturally, I began panicking thinking that someone had broken into my house. I was turned away from the door and didn't want to move in case it was. Then suddenly, I feel the weight of someone crawl over only light, as if it was a kid. Then they lay down next to me on my bed, holding my finger. Obviously, I'm extremely confused and I'm preparing to throw my blankets over them and bolt out of my room. But when I open my eyes, the weight of them on my bed disappears and the feeling of them holding my finger slowly fades away. Other experiences I've had in the past, such as a girl's voice saying hello and light breathing outside my window, I've just brushed off as my imagination or sleep deprivation, but this was different. I was awake the whole time. I talked to my mom about this, and she told me that when she was pregnant with my younger brother, about 15 years ago, she used to feel someone bump into the end of her bed and stare at her. Initially, she thought it was just my older brother, or I, who used to come into her room at night if we needed something. But when she would open her eyes, she couldn't see anything. However, One day, she felt a bump on her bed, and someone was looking at her, but this time, it was at the side of the bed next to her. When she opened her eyes, it was a little blonde girl in a nightie. 
my mum remembers following her out of the bedroom into the hallway and disappearing around the corner. This girl was never aggressive and just seemed to want my mum to follow her and give her attention. And now I'm wondering if it's the same girl coming up to my room now and just wanting my attention or some sort of love. Hence why she lay down next to me and held my finger. So today I got a text from a family friend. She wanted me to check on her grandmother, who was house-sitting directly across the street. They hadn't been able to get a hold of her for a few days. I had known the grandmother and recently took her to said family friend's wedding. The whole car ride there, we listened and sang to the 50s music from when she was young, smoked cigarettes, and just had an enjoyable little road trip. Well, I was at work, so I called my dad and asked him to check up on her. An hour later, I got a call that the coroner was now across the street. My dad found her decomposing in the house, and they said she had probably been there for about five days. The heater was turned on to 80 degrees in the house, and there was a dog, so you can just imagine how bad it was. A god-awful situation. But that's not the weird part. Sunday night, five days ago, I had sleep paralysis. I haven't had it in probably over seven years. Usually when this used to happen, I would see figures and not be able to move and I would wake up over and over again. This time was a little different though. No figures, just everything in my room was off by a foot or two, like my TV and dresser. Though every time I woke up, I was facing my window. It was two feet down, forcing me to stare paralyzed directly across the street. I woke up over and over again, just staring at the house across the street. The next day, I felt so off all day and couldn't shake the uneasy feeling from that dream. Eventually, I forgot about it until this all happened, and I didn't even know she was house-sitting until today. I can't help but feel she was trying to tell me to come over, check on her, get her dead body off the floor. But I don't know, could have just been a random dream. All across the country, there are local short tracks, like the overs you'll see in the NASCAR, where people can race several different kinds of cars every week. I've always loved NASCAR, and my goal is to race at Daytona one day. And ever since I was 11, I've been racing at a local racetrack in Florida, and sometimes at other short tracks around the states when there are big races going on. Right now, I race what are known as super late models, which is the closest you can get to an actual NASCAR race car. Over the years, I've gotten to be a pretty good driver, usually winning multiple times per year. This is going to sound off topic, but until September of last year, I never believed in the supernatural. But then, something very unusual happened that made me reconsider my future as a racer. It was a beautiful Saturday night, and I was getting ready for a big 200 lap race that over 30 other drivers were going to be in. I was going to start in third place, but about half an hour before the race, Something in my gut told me not to get in the car. But when you're a race car driver, you get used to being nervous and just have to suck it up and deal with it. This time was different though. I had this nagging feeling that something terrible was going to happen if I got into the car. Even though I couldn't shake the feeling, I still got into my car. And by the time the green flag waved and the race started, I'd kind of forgotten about it. About 10 laps in, Two cars spun behind me and hit the inside wall. The caution flag flew, signaling for all the drivers to slow down and follow the pace car as the wreck was cleaned up. Now, the feeling came back. This time, however, it made me feel physically sick. And I couldn't race feeling the way I did. So I went through the opening in the turn one wall that led to the parking lot, where all of the race teams worked on their cars. I threw up as soon as I undid my belts and climbed out of my car, and me and my crew packed up and headed home. My friend Pete drove me home as I laid back in the passenger seat, trying to get some rest. The next thing I knew, I was hovering over the racetrack, watching as the cars battled for position, inches apart, trying to make as much ground as they could. As I looked down on the track, one of the cars caught my eye, a familiar white and red car running in ninth place with a black number 62 on the side of the car and on the roof. 
It was my car. I remember being confused and flying down to the ground to get a better view. And I landed in the infield in turn one, watching myself racing to stay in the top 10. About five laps went by before the unthinkable happened. My car that was being driven by me launched off the side of another car as me and the driver next to me battled for position. I watched as my car slid into the opening in the turn one wall at over a hundred miles an hour, hitting the driver's side first. The hit was so hard that it ripped my car in half and tore everything below my hips off. The back half of the car, with me still in my seat, slid back down onto the track as I listened to myself screaming in agony. The other driver swerved trying to avoid the two pieces of my car, but one driver hit me head on, ripping even more off the part of the car I was in and putting me out of my misery. I watched as my head, ribs, lungs, guts and other organs and pieces of my bones and my skin went flying all over the track, summer to the stands and where people were watching. A few drivers spun in puddles of my blood as they went by. This description doesn't do justice to what I saw. I looked at the terrible scene for a few seconds and everything went black. I opened my eyes to find myself in the reclined passenger seat of Pete's pickup truck, where I fell asleep trying to make myself feel better. Luckily I did, and I woke up just as we got back to my house. I thanked him and headed in. As horrifying as it was at the time, I wasn't gonna let it bother me. Race car drivers sometimes think about fatal crashes as a possibility, but we accept the danger. You have to accept it whenever you do anything dangerous. The next day, I woke up at around 9.30, and after I had breakfast, brushed my teeth, and did everything else you expect someone to do in the morning, I went out to my garage, where I kept the race car. I was about to get to work preparing it for next week's race, when I noticed something that made me shit myself, and I'm not embarrassed to admit that. There was a massive dent in the driver's side of the car, right about where I hit the wall in that dream. That fucking dream. I looked inside the car, where I saw that there was a huge crack going down the roll cage. At that moment, I wondered if I should ever race again. Like I said before, I've never believed in ghosts, spirits, or anything paranormal or supernatural. But after I had that terrible dream and saw my car the next day, I started to wonder about a lot of things. Why did I feel a really strong urge to not race that night? Why did I get sick when I tried to? How did my mind paint such a vivid, fucked up image in that dream? And lastly, what if that wasn't a dream? What if I really did die in an alternate universe and that dream was a glimpse into it? If I hadn't gotten sick in my car that night, would I have lived to race another day? Would everyone that was there be forever traumatised by the sight of my dismembered body flying everywhere? If it was just a bad dream, why did my car have damage in the same place I wrecked it in the dream? even though I didn't wreck it in real life. I'm a believer now. Something was at work that night that I think kept me alive. And somehow, I feel like I would have died a horrible death if it wasn't. I feel lucky to still be racing today, but it's terrifying to think about things like this. I'm a believer in the paranormal, but at the same time, I find very few things to be actually legit. Women in my family were always somewhat more sensitive to this stuff, so yeah, growing up, I would always expect to see stuff. Even now, I chalk up most of it to my brain playing tricks, but these two times, I have no actual explanation for. The lesser one was when I was laying in bed in the afternoon. My flatmate in the living room, I was just staring at the ceiling, as the average depressed gal until I felt something come up the bed on my left. Like if a cat jumped beside you. Then it started walking around me. I could literally feel the weight of it going by my head and towards my right and then thump. Like if a cat had laid on my side. Literally felt like a cat laying on me. I freaked out because I was very much awake and I didn't have a cat. Never had. I could move but didn't want to. So I called out to a flatmate, and the moment he arrived, it was gone. I could even make out the flattened spot it was laying in. 
The major one scared the absolute shit out of me. Same apartment, earlier the same week. It was around 2am. I was having insomnia as usual, and I was laying on my side, scrolling through the phone. I was alone that night. My mates were over at their parents. Suddenly, I hear a whistle, like a two-note come hail whistle, clear as day, coming from the end of the hallway. It was a really long hallway, like a good five meters. It was a four bedroom apartment, so it was huge. I put my phone aside. I'm now in the darkness with a good amount of moonlight coming through. Mind you, when I heard it again, same place, same tone, and not a second later, I heard a loud and clear set of footsteps bolting from all the way down the hallway towards my door. And as I sort of in bed in a completely dark person, the size of a 14 year old came through the door, turned and ran straight at me. I shit you not, it was bright enough from the light coming from the window in front of me. I could even make out where its ears were. It looked just like a person, but pitch black. I only had time to cover my eyes and I did so with such force, I bruised myself. It took me a minute to reach for the bedside lamp, still covering my eyes. I mean, I cannot express how intense it was. First a whistle, then I clearly heard it running towards me, and then it just went straight at me. I have no idea how I could even dream something like that up. I wasn't sleeping, it wasn't a dream. My phone was even in the same Twitter post I was looking at before, and it surely wasn't sleep paralysis, since I've never had it, and could obviously move. You often hear about shadow figures standing around in the dark, but this one literally lunged at me. Has anyone else ever experienced something like this? Not so long ago, my family sued people because they were trying to steal from a house we have, and they were also inhabiting illegally and using it for drugs and other illegal businesses. Thankfully we won the case, and we were going to get our house back. Just in case it isn't obvious, these people aren't nice people that needed a home and couldn't contact us. They were genuinely evil people that have killed a cop, stole from us for a decade and have caused problems for many people. We were starting to think that they might try something for a last ditch effort to cause issues for us. And that's when it started. Weird activity began happening around the house we live in. Whenever you place an object in a safe location, like in the center of a table or somewhere where it wouldn't fall unless something pushed it, and you leave for a while, you might come back to it on the ground in a specific location. If it only happened once, you could blame it on the cat or the wind. But the thing is, that once you put it back where it was and leave again, when you returned, it had been in the exact same position in the floor. It's happened with potted plants, bottles, electronic equipment and other small objects. My family were worried and threw holy water at different areas of the house, because for where I am, people believe in witches. The only place where they didn't throw holy water was in my room, because nothing ever happened in my room. Shortly after, Whenever I place my switch where I always have it in my room, leave and then come back, it's always on the floor, face down and directly parallel to my bed. It's happened multiple times and it only happens when I'm in my room for most of the day. It's never happened whenever I'm at college or when I'm somewhere else. I'm starting to wonder if it's actual paranormal activity or it's just small seismic activity since small earthquakes aren't that uncommon here. If it's a ghost, I don't really feel worried since it doesn't feel evil. Maybe it doesn't make sense, but my room feels normal, unlike some other areas I've gone to when there's been paranormal activity in the past. Those areas, like my grandma's house, always feel like the air is heavier and you're not alone, but my room just feels as safe as it always felt. Can it be paranormal activity, or is it just me overthinking? A little over two weeks ago, I had to make the most difficult call of my life and have my cat, Bear, put to sleep. He was old. So, so old at two weeks shy of 19. And I knew his time was coming soon. But nothing can really prepare you for having to make that choice, you know? I was devastated and couldn't stop crying for days afterwards. One evening, I was just bawling my eyes out on the couch, staring up at the ceiling. 
when I felt the distinct sensation of my bear jumping up on the couch next to me and climbing into my lap. And maybe I'd fallen asleep and it was a dream, but it felt so different from any dream I'd had about him before. He felt so warm and soft and heavy and real. I could feel his fur. I could feel his little head resting on my arm. I could even feel him purring. And when I lifted my head, nothing was there. And it felt like losing him all over again. Fast forward to last week. Still depressed, still having trouble functioning. I was having a day where I just didn't want to get out of bed. All I wanted to do was sleep. So I was just lying there, desperately trying to will myself back to sleep. And once again, I felt my cat jump up next to me, followed by feeling him pawing insistently at my arm and hand the way he always did when he wanted me to wake up. So I sat up and once again, he wasn't physically there. But this time I didn't feel crushed over it. Actually, from that point on, most of my sadness went away and I started to feel better. It still hurts and I still cry every now and then. But I really think these two incidences were Bear trying to comfort me and let me know that it's all right and he's all right now. To preface, in 2013, I was homeless and living in the local women's shelter. The executive director of the place, a man I'll call Dan, was shady as hell with the creepiest, sleaziest aura around him and a long history of abusive behavior towards the shelter's clients. But that's an entirely different story. Most nights, Dan left the shelter by 5 p.m. and he was virtually never to be found on the grounds past 7 p.m. But one October night, he was still kicking around at nine. A few of the other ladies and I were sitting outside just chatting when we saw him pull his car off to the back driveway and take off down the street like his ass was on fire. His back tires spun out in the gravel before getting purchased. That's how fast he accelerated. And just as his car disappeared, I saw an absolutely enormous black dog or wolf-like creature leaping through the big wall where his office was. It took three long strides across the front yard leapt towards the road Dan had just taken off down and vanished into smoke. Everyone was quiet for a moment until I asked if anyone else had just seen that. One of the ladies just said, yep, as we hurriedly rushed to get back inside. I've never felt so deeply and viscerally unnerved than I did that night. I draped so many blankets over my bunk that it was like a little cave, just trying to feel secure enough to sleep. Fast forward to December. We had a new lady in our room and we're staying up past lights out to work on some small Christmas gifts. And while we were working, we were quietly telling ghost stories. Well, I happened to mention what had happened in October and once I'd finished, two things happened all at once. One, the temperature in the room plunged. It was always a little chilly back there because Dan was too cheap to turn up the heat or even turn it on sometimes. But this was cold, like someone had opened the window. And two, the baby in the room next door who'd been dead asleep let out the most blood-curdling shriek I'd ever heard from her, like someone was hurting her, and started scream crying so loud she woke up everyone in the women's shelter. So I should start by saying I'm a healthy, sane, 18-year-old male. I've never had hallucinations or been seriously sick in my life. I've also never known to black out or take micro naps. My mother has schizophrenia, but as far as I know, it was pretty mild and I've never shown symptoms of it. With that out of the way, here's what happened. So I was hanging out with my significant other before they went to class in college and before I, I had to go to work. We parted ways and I got on the bus to go home to get ready. I got on the bus with five other people, and I sat in the back, as I usually do, so all five were in front of me. I looked down to check my phone when the bus started to move, so I could check the route, because I'm a nervous person, and I wanted to make sure I was on the right route. I was. I looked up after maybe 30 seconds, and I'm absolutely sure the bus hadn't stopped to let anyone off. Somehow, though, all five of the people I got on with were just gone. The only people on the bus were me and the driver. It freaked me out a good bit because the next bus stop was still up ahead 
so there's no way the bus stop and just let people off in the middle of the street. I checked my phone again to get my mind off of it, and then suddenly the bus turned into a different street, which is weird, since the route had no turns. It was a straight line. I'm very much into horror, so my immediate thought was, huh, shit, guess I'm going to hell. I signalled that I wanted to get off, though when the driver let me off without saying anything. I've been thinking about this all day, and I still have no idea what could have happened there. I know this isn't really as creepy as some of the other stories on here, but this genuinely did scare me, and I needed to talk about it. It all started when I was eight years old, after my father died. The first thing I could remember happening is these two brothers moving to my town. They only stayed there for a few months. I decided to become friends with them. We'd talk and hang out. Then, they started telling me things like, we know where you live. We know what is inside your house. I got scared. But then, they started talking about specific things in my house, such as what I ate, what I wore, and so much more. It was super creepy. But, I was known as the weird kid, so I really didn't mind as much. They started telling me a ghost was following me and that the ghost was named after them. They talked to me about hauntings and scary stuff. I was a little interested in scary stuff as a kid. Like Bloody Mary, the Boogeyman, etc. That's when I started to think, could these boys be ghosts or something? In my culture, we believe that ghosts can pretend to be humans or walk amongst the living. The very first paranormal experience I had was in class. I was reading a book. And my friend had her water bottle sitting next to me on her desk. I swear, the water bottle started moving slowly as if someone was dragging it. I got a little scared, but she said it must be the condensation under the water bottle or something. So I thought that was what happened. But the water bottle never did it again, and we were there for a long time. The boys eventually moved, and I was sitting in my living room watching TV. My grandma was in the kitchen. Suddenly, I hear a little boy's voice say, Hi, Ashley, my name. Ha ha ha. I jumped off the crouch screaming and asked my grandma if she'd heard it. She said no, and I looked crazy. I heard elderly people could not hear certain frequencies. So maybe she couldn't hear the voice, but only me. The creepiest thing is the voice sounded like the youngest brother's voice. I'm not joking with you. That's when I realised my house was probably haunted. I started searching up about the paranormal. I would hear people call my name, lights would flicker, and things would move. I even got smacked in the face by a flying pillow, and bitch slapped by a ghost. I became paranoid, and my family took me to the psychiatrist. They thought I was crazy, and I refused to sleep in my room. I slept in my mom's room until I was 12. Sometimes, my mum would force me to sleep in my room. My grandma only experienced one thing that was paranormal. We were going downstairs to eat when the light flickered. She thought it was me, and I said it was a ghost. So I went downstairs and asked the ghost to flick on the light. I was like, Mr. Ghost, please flick on the lights again. The light flicked on, and my grandma screamed. One time, I was sitting in my living room and playing with my dolls. Suddenly, I had someone to tell me to shut up. I yelled and said, do not tell me to shut up, that's rude. And I realised I was the only one in the room. I froze and said, do you want me to leave? The spirit replied, get out. I screamed, left my doll and ran out the room. Another one was, I was watching TV again. One of the lamps flicked on and I heard a click. I looked at it and thought it was a malfunction. I turned off the TV and turned the lights off. The other light flicked on, and I turned it off too. Then, both of them flicked on, and that's when I screamed and ran to my room. I was also watched by a spirit in the shower. When I showered, I felt the curtains move and it got cold in the bathroom. I'd also feel someone touch me. Just knowing a ghost watched me shower makes me uncomfortable. Anyways, the scariest thing I've ever experienced is seeing a demon. 
The first one was when I was going to room I to change. All the lights in my room were off, so I flicked on the hallway light and opened my door. I was about to step in when something in my mind told me to stop. I looked to my bed, and what do I see? I see a dark shadow squatting on my bed. I couldn't see it clearly, but I saw a little bit of it. It was covered in blood, had horns and long talons. I was frozen in place. Then it moved and glared at me. I screamed, and my parents asked what was wrong. I said I saw a monster. I turned on the light, and nothing was there. I turned off the light, and no shadow was sitting on my bed. After that, I never, ever slept with the light off again. To this day, I sleep with my lights on. Forget a nightlight. I ask myself, what if I did not listen to the voice and went inside in the dark? I mean, demons are afraid of the light. Would I have been dragged to a dark room or killed? It gives me shivers up my spine. I saw another demon squatting on my balcony. I saw it and asked about the stupidest thing. I was not really aware of what a demon was and how evil they were, so I told them I was eight and wanted to be friends. I also asked if it was a demon. It looked like it was about to lunge, so I got the hell out of there. You know demons lunge like a damn wildcat? Final thing I experienced is a demon in my bed. I fell asleep. My mom finally convinced me to go and sleep in my room. I woke up and my room was dark. I was frightened because I never turned off my light. I thought the power went out. I started hearing a growl, like a beast's growl. I didn't have a pet or anything. I turn to my left and see a shadowy figure. I inspect it and see his long snake-like tongue, his sharp talons, his horns, and his sharp teeth. I was petrified and I tried to move. However, I was paralyzed. I tried praying to God. Please God help me. It covered my mouth and I looked down to see I was naked. I was nine for crying out loud. Apparently, the demon doesn't care about age. He kept on touching me and then he climbed on my chest. I saw his face. He had many eyes and looked like a typical demon. I was staring right into his eyes and it was the most terrifying night of my life. He started choking me and pressing down on my chest. It felt like eternity, and I thought I was going to hell. Next, I blacked out, and I woke up. I was drenched in sweat and gasping. I was scared to sleep in my room and turn off the lights. When the power goes out, I scream and nearly break a leg trying to find a light. As a preface for this story, I was roughly 17 years old, and I hadn't had any drugs or alcohol that day. I believe there's no human technology that would be capable of this, but I'm also not sure what happened. This was all so prior to 2007, so I wouldn't have even been able to record it. Honestly, if I could have been able to record it, then I wouldn't even bring it up, because I'd just have to ignore it, because what the fuck else am I going to do? It was 8 or 9 at night. And I was driving to a local subway. And I was only two or three blocks away from my house in a suburban neighbourhood in northern Alabama. Specifically around the Redstone Arsenal area. The sky was clear. Stars shining and moon out. When I stopped at a four-way intersection, stop sign. I was looking at the sky. In the distance above my old school when the night began to burn like an old film reel that caught fire. It started as little cigarette burns on a slide. Then began to spread outward until everything was engulfed in daylight. This was not a beam of light, flare, or any other random military thing. It was as if someone turned on the sun, but the sun wasn't there. I freaked out, but in a weird way. I was super analytical about it. I parked my car in the middle of the road and got out. I looked at all the houses, all the trees, and something felt off. Even more than just having the night burn today. That's when I looked at the ground and realised. There's no shadows. Under my feet, under my car, behind anything. It was all missing a shadow. This just freaked me out even more. When it comes to paranormal or supernatural experiences, 
I believe it's always better to have someone with you so you can turn to them and say, you saw that too, right? Like, I'm not going crazy, right? That's the first thing I went for, and to the nearest house with a car in the driveway, banging on the door and ringing the doorbell. They didn't answer fast enough, so I'd run to the next house, then the next, and the next until I was left standing in the street, completely at a loss for proving my reality was real or insanity. Then it just faded away, like someone lowering the dimmer on a light switch, until it was back to normal nighttime. I was still standing in the street, staring at the sky, when another car rolled up to the intersection. Stupidly, I ran over to the car, waving my arms, and started knocking on their window. It was an elderly couple, clearly confused, so they only cracked their window to speak to me. I dumped everything on them, and asked if they had seen anything since they were driving towards my location. I think you've had too much to drink, was all I needed to hear to crush my hope. I knew they thought I was high, drunk or crazy, but this has never happened, ever, and it hasn't happened since. I've done a lot of research, and I've heard a lot of theories, but it's so hard to explain. I keep telling the story, hoping someone else has experienced this, but I've found no one. For some background information, my family and I moved out of our old Victorian home at the start of 2021. I didn't necessarily think it was haunted while I was living there. However, after discussing some experiences with my younger sister, I'm beginning to wonder if it was. The other day, I mentioned to my sister about how I used to struggle to sleep in the old house, because from the age of about six, a shadowy figure of a young girl, she looked about 10 years old, used to stand in the far corner of my room by my toy cupboard and watch me. She never moved out of the shaded corner, and she never took her eyes off of me. This wasn't every night, but happened maybe two or three times a week. I never told anybody at the time. I'm not sure why, I just never thought to mention it. After telling my sister this, her face drained of all colour, and she told me that a young man and woman used to stand in the corner of her room and watch her from about the age of six as well. Neither of us were scared of the figures. They were just kind of there. However, neither of us would fall asleep until sunrise, when the figures would disappear. We also talked about hearing footsteps on the third floor of the house and doors randomly slamming shut. At the time, we both assumed it was the next door neighbors being loud and it was a terraced house. And because the home was old, we assumed a draft may have moved the doors, but now we're not too sure. I got freaked out and told my dad, who told me that when my cousin came to visit at the age of about six, she told my dad that she had seen a young girl standing at the top of the stairs that led up to the third floor of the house. He also told me that he sometimes felt someone tap him on the shoulder when he was in the house alone. He also mentioned the fact that he and my mum used to hear footsteps on the second and third floor of the house and assume it was me and my sister. However, when they went to check, we were both often in bed, asleep. This happened in 2021. My family and I were living in a pretty old house at the time, like really old. There was mold, wood creaking in the middle of the night, and when wind would blow, it sounds like the windows were gonna shatter. My point is, it's an old house. I have three different things that have happened in this house. Me and my dad were driving back from a spirit Halloween store for Halloween decor because it was around that time. When we were walking up to our door, we heard a loud bang on the window. Near the bottom right corner, we had cats at the time, but they didn't jump at windows and we checked. Two of them were asleep upstairs and the other was outside. My thought was maybe something fell and hit the window, but nothing was laying next to it. If you get the chance, take the palm of your hand and slap it on your window, and it sounds exactly like what we heard. The second thing that happened to me was a little creepier. There were wooden floorboards that led from my kitchen to my living room. The kitchen had a tiled floor and the living room had carpet. Whenever you'd walk through these wooden boards, they'd make a mind-numbing creaking noise. Now, I've had my cats walk over these boards and they won't make a sound. 
and my cats are decently large and heavy. When I was home alone and sitting on my couch, I heard the floorboards make a noise. I've heard them make noises before, but this one sounded directional. I was obviously hesitant to go check, but eventually I did, and of course, there was nothing there. The third thing that happened is almost impossible for me to explain. I didn't see this one, but my dad did. I didn't know this up until today. He walked into the kitchen and passed the countertop, as he walked in a small glass moved about four feet across the countertop, almost as if somebody had slid it. We had no one in the house at the time except for me, my mom and dad. The windows may have been open, but even if they were, it wouldn't be enough to slide a glass across a table. This one is kind of a bonus, but not really that creepy. I have a very big habit of speaking in my sleep. I've said weird things before, like get the shovel or run, but my parents said they heard me scratching my wall in the middle of the night. My bed was pushed up against the wall and apparently my hand was in the air, clawing at the wall. Another creepy thing happened. My room is in the hallway adjacent to my parents. Apparently, in the middle of the night, I sat up and stared blankly into their room. My dad looked over and asked me if I was alright. I didn't respond, but I put my hand up and waved like Forrest Gump. I've been having nightmares for years. It's getting progressively worse. It started with things like being chased or lost in dark corridors. Then it was about my pets and family getting sick or dying. And after this, it's mostly about me getting killed. In most of these dreams, I see or meet, but never talk to, a lady with dark hair. I don't know how much her appearance is meaningful, but in case it is, slim, average height, pale, but not translucent, skin, hooded eyes, Asian looking nose and small lips, no makeup and dressed in off-white colour. A few nights ago, she just started to choke me out of nowhere. I had trouble for breathing, for real, and when I woke up, took my things and went to another room because I was convinced she would kill me if I didn't move, and I felt like I was being watched for the rest of the night. Since I tried looking for medical advice multiple times without any success, I asked for advice from a witch. I salted the corners of my apartment. When I was putting away my salt container, my kettle jumped for no apparent reason. It scared me and my cat. And then I heard a sound really similar to the sound of air escaping a dead body. You can Google it if you're really interested. Then I took a bath with salt and lavender, and I haven't seen her since. My dreams are a lot more normal and less scary. She isn't in any of them. I still feel that some of them have some more meaning than just a dream, but it's not something I'm worried about. But what is really chilling about this lady is that my friend also used to be visited by her. We never talked about it before, and it turns out he had to call a priest to get rid of her. I've rented my current house for around three years. It's located in a heavily wooded area on a couple acres of land, but with neighbours not too far off. I've always heard odd noises in the house. For example, a loose floorboard creaking under someone's weight when there's no one around but myself. And things moving slightly, such as a water glass being shifted on the counter. It didn't bother me too much, as those occurrences I could shrug off as overthinking or ordinary house noises. However, when my boyfriend moved in, he too would hear these things. It was more so scratching and tapping noises outside though. Sometimes so loud, they would wake us up. Him being freaked out about it assured me it wasn't just in my head. We lightheartedly joked about it being a ghost, but I think we both didn't want to admittedly play into that much as the occurrences were usually few and far between. He ended up moving out eventually, due to needing to be closer to his work and things became scarier after. A specific instance happened around 11pm while he and I were on a phone call. Someone knocked on my door lightly three times. My parents reside pretty close by, so I automatically thought something was wrong and they had come by. My dog was barking like mad, which is not usual, so naively, 
I went and answered the door, not even 30 seconds after the knocks. No one was there when I opened it. I was completely shocked and scared after I realized it could be someone trying to rob me. I closed the door quickly and locked up absolutely everything. My dog continued to bark for a good 10 minutes after the whole encounter, all while staring at the door. Let me start off by saying I was not on drugs, I wasn't drinking, and I wasn't half asleep. I was wide awake, walking to school. I'm not sure if this was a spirit or just a boy that liked me and was super duper fast, but this story is 100% true and strange. This happened about 12 years ago. I lived with my nana. My nana was a security guard and her shift started at 5 a.m. So I'd wake up super early, get dressed, grab my things for school, and she'd take me to my father's house on her way to work. My father struggled, so the only thing he could afford to do for me was give me bus fare so I could catch the bus to school. I didn't mind it though, since my god sister lived upstairs and we went to the same school. We caught the bus together every morning. One week, my nana was off work, so she told me the night before that she wasn't taking me to my dad's and I'd have to walk to school. It wasn't really a long walk, so I was cool with it. I woke up feeling well rested. There was a slight fog outside and the birds were chirping. It was super quiet, but I could tell the day was going to be a nice day. It was mid-spring. I ate a light breakfast, grabbed my things, and headed out the door. Now, usually I wouldn't be caught dead without my headphones in my ears, but for some reason, I didn't have them this morning. I got halfway up my street when I heard this loud voice behind me. It was a male's voice singing Come and Talk to Me by Dodecki. Looked over my shoulder, startled, and saw him. I could tell he was brown-skinned, about six feet, haircut. He was wearing a dark jacket with dark pants, but I couldn't make out his facial features. He was about five houses away from me, but I couldn't believe how loud and beautiful his voice was. It sounded as if he were almost right behind me. My heart began to race and I continued walking, figuring he was just a boy that went to my school. He kept singing, getting louder and louder. I was so impressed and confused that I had to look back one more time. He was about three houses away from me now and I could make out his eyes. He was looking straight at me. This boy was singing to me. I kept walking, thinking to myself, whenever we get to this corner, he's going to catch up to me and I'm definitely going to give him my number because this is low-key romance and I love old school r and B. I I get to the corner and it sounds like he's finally caught up. I stop, turn around and the singing stops. He's gone. I couldn't believe it. There was no way he could have just disappeared. He was in the middle of singing as I turned around. I finished walking to school. I told my sister and my friends and they couldn't explain it either. I knew I had to walk to school the next day, so I figured I'd find out who he was then. I woke up at the same time, got dressed and began my walk, anticipating that beautiful voice. But instead I got nothing. It wasn't there. I never heard that voice again. I don't know who or what that was, but I'll remember that for the rest of my life. The year is 2005. My mental health problems are at an all time high. In June of that year, I had moved 420 kilometers away from my hometown to go study, leaving my friends and family behind. My grades are dropping from a 90% overall to barely passing grades. I'm having financial problems and my relationship with my roommates is non-existent. I feel like a failure more and more each passing day and just overall overwhelmed with everything. Although I had sought help in the form of a therapist, it just wasn't helping at all. At the end of my rope, one night while my roommate was away for a few hours, I decided to light some candles, incense, and to just call up to anyone listening asking them to send a sign of some sort. I remember feeling a warmth wrapping around me and I broke down crying, something I hadn't been able to do in months. As I'm sitting on the floor crying, my roommate enters the apartment, stops midway to her room, looks at me and asks if I'm all right. I simply nod, although I don't feel okay. I turn back toward my candles and specifically asking my grandpa for a sign. 
to tell me if I was on the right track in my life. If I should just stop fighting, give up and go back home. All in my head. And that's why my roommate opens her radio in her room. And on the random music channel I hear, life is like an old glass glued to the table. No one can find the rewind button, girl. So cradle your head in your hands. Breathe. Just breathe. I was a mess. I understand it could have just been a coincidence, and it meant absolutely nothing, but to me, it felt like the message I truly needed to hear. A few weeks later, things were looking a lot better with my notes. My financial problems had settled down, I'd actually formed a bond with my roommates, and my mental health problems, although not gone, felt more manageable. I graduated from my course with an 88% overall. Every time I hear this song, it brings a tear to my eye, remembering how much that simple message helped me. So a few days ago, I had a very particular dream that might just be a dream, but I believe it's worth telling it because of its symbolism and what happened afterwards. My mum and grandma passed away 12 years ago with three months difference. And it's not rare for me to dream with them, just like every other person, although with repeating patterns. However, sometimes these dreams make me feel like I'm having some sort of contact with them. So among many things that happened in this dream, like being in a church and seeing a priest teasing and being silly with a man that was supposed to be Jesus Christ, which ended up in a golden cross, hitting a candle and burning a corner of the church, and then being reprimanded by the parishioners due to their childish behaviour, I end up telling these people something like, if you expect so much from others, even if they look like God, you'll be disappointed. You should understand we're only humans and leave this place to come into a big, bright room that looks like a restaurant. White tables, white walls, and many people there. Many people. In this place, I pass by a great aunt of mine who died in 2020, who's speaking to someone. And next to her, there's this famous folkloric singer who died in the 90s. I just brushed that nonsense off to be sort of a dream. Half lucid dreaming, I guess, and come out. Then the daughter of this great auntie of mine comes with my young cousins. We hug and speak. These are all well and alive. I look back at the entrance of that restaurant, which has a huge glass door and windows, and just stare at the people speaking to each other as if they were eating or having a coffee, except for the fact that there was nothing on the tables. Suddenly, I see my mum. She looks like when she was about 35 or 36. She smiles, waves at me and sort of gestures to tell my aunt, the great aunt's daughter, to say hi to her too. She looks detached from me, but in a good way, just doing her business and not worried about stuff. I say, hey, my mum is there, like normal, but somehow surprised. And my aunt says, what are you talking about? Your mum? There's no one there. And then I realise I can see the dead. So then there's people humming some sort of melody next to this place. We go there and there's this gathering, like a homage to the dead or something like that, with candles on the floor. Everyone seems to have a heavy mood, but I'm feeling uplifted and really moved after seeing all that bustle and my relatives looking gleeful and having a good time. But that melody felt sort of haunting and solemn in a sentimental way, like a passage or link to the spiritual realm. I feel like it kept me linked with to the spirits. I can't explain it. Next, I wake up from the dream with that melody in my mind, and I wonder whether I should take the phone and sing it to the recorder, so as not to forget it. But I look at the clock and it's 6.59, too early and I don't want to get fully awake. Plus the melody I was recalling now didn't feel exactly as the one in my dream. It didn't feel that magical and moving. I turn in bed, close my eyes, thinking about the dream, about that illusory communication with my dead relatives and try to drift into sleep while hearing the soft noise of my neighbours getting up. And then suddenly, I hear these two loud snapping sounds coming from the hallway next to my bedroom. That distinctive noise power switches would make when the power goes off. Those sounds definitely didn't come from the neighbours, as the latter tend to be soft and muscled. I look at my clock that's AC powered to check whether the lights have gone out, but not. It's about 7.03 or 04, and realise that was almost the exact time my mum passed away. The time she used to wake up every day too. I've had some weird things happening at home too, and I've learned not to be scared. My house was my grandparents' one, my mum's side, 
And since it was built in 1980, no one else has lived there but our family. So I know nothing evil can be cohabiting with me. Later, when I got up, I checked around the house for something that could have fallen, making a noise. Everything was untouched. I moved to a different city for studies and everything was going fine. Going to studies every day, chilling or visiting my parents on weekends and stuff. One night, however, I turned off the light and headed to bed when I heard a chilling sound of someone breathing out right next to my ear. I was freaked out. I tried finding logical explanations like the neighbours and stuff, but nothing. I didn't have any neighbours when that happened and I couldn't replicate the sound. Next day, I was taking a shower after a long day, and around the same time, 1am, I heard the same damn sound of someone breathing out loudly on the other side of the curtains. I freaked out and thought that someone broke into my apartment, but no. The door was locked and no one was there. Fast forward some time. Due to some circumstances, I've moved back to my parents' house, and at first, everything is normal. Then one night, I'm trying to fall asleep and I hear the same sound coming from the middle of the room. Didn't get much sleep that night. This happened a few more times over the year. Last night was pretty awful. I tried emptying my mind and falling asleep. And then I heard a strange bell sound, I guess. I didn't know it was just metallic and unusual. And after that, I hear someone breathing out loudly. I tried to match it with my dad snoring in the background, but it was completely different. I thought it might have been sleep paralysis, so I tried sleeping again. Not even a minute later, it happens again. Not once or twice, but for 10 minutes straight. It was uneven. Sometimes the breaths were the same volume. Other times they were increasing volume, like whatever it was, was trying to get attention. I felt shivers for every breath because they were so clear. My brother couldn't hear the sound. I don't know, maybe he just wasn't focusing on it. Anyway, my dad got up and came into the room to check on our dog who started throwing up a bit, not feeling well. And the moment my dad opened our door, the breath was the loudest and sound annoyed. After that, I didn't hear it. I don't know what's happening. I'm pretty young and I don't have any schizophrenic in my family. I have some symptoms associated with it, but they're pretty general and each have their own cause. I don't know why an angry spirit or whatever would target me either, so I'm left stumped. Any help is appreciated. I guess I'll start off about two years ago, when I had my first encounter. It's hard to explain what I was seeing, but I was sitting in my room with my buddy, when all of a sudden I started seeing outlines of human figures that looked like gasoline vapours, standing right in front of me. For whatever reason, I wasn't freaked out or anything, but was rather calm and had a sense of peacefulness in a way. When I asked my friend if he could see them, he thought I was losing my mind and I'd gone crazy. I felt that these figures that I was seeing weren't trying to harm me, so I reached my hand out to one as if I was going to high five it and it did it back to me. I remember seeing what looked to be strings coming off of the figure and ran my hand through them and I could physically feel them. The best way to describe it was almost like running your hand through very thin and long soft hair. That was, like I said, about two years ago, right after I had just turned 20. Since then, I haven't had an encounter like that at all. Until tonight, about an hour ago. I came upstairs to get ready to sleep, brushed my teeth and blah blah blah. Crawled into bed, and there's still sunlight outside, so my room is lit up even without the light on. As I'm laying here, I start to see the same figures that I had seen two years ago, but this time they were different. This time, I didn't feel the calmness and peacefulness. I stuck both my hands out, and two of them held one of my hands each. Then I started feeling a pressure and an almost burning-like sensation. At this point, I'm like, what the actual fuck? And I thought I was losing my mind, so I said, Papa? My papa committed suicide a few days after Christmas two years ago, right before I seen these figures the first time. Once I said that, they were all gone in an instant. The burning feeling in my hand turned numb for a couple minutes after they vanished. Now I'm sitting here thinking I'm a schizophrenic or something, when all of a sudden, I can see up on my dresser a figure of a cat, 
A goddamn cat ghost. I said to myself, dude, this is not happening right now. So I started doing the pss -pss -pss thing you do to call cats over, but it didn't move. I stuck my hand out and it hopped down onto my bed and laid next to me. The outline was so faint that for the few minutes it laid beside me, I didn't know which way its head was or which way its ass was. But when I could see it, I scratched it, even though I couldn't feel it. This is the part that's trippy. It hopped back up onto my dresser and the book that I have up there, and I swear this on my mother's life, I watched the cat push the book to where the corner of it was hanging off my dresser by about an inch. I stood up out of bed and instantly FaceTimed my cousin to show him and tell him because I was and still am in shock. I don't know if I'm going crazy or what. During our time in the cult, the leaders decided I should move in with them. They had five teenage girls living there at the time. I was one of them. One evening, I was doing my homework on the kitchen table with the same friend who saw that flying black creature with me. Suddenly, out of nowhere, my back started stinging, and I mean really stinging. I was irritated by it and was trying to reach around and feel what was going on. Finally, after a minute or so, I asked my friend to have a look as it was really bugging me. I roll up my shirt and she stares at my back in confusion. I ask her what she sees and she tells me I have three long scratches down my back. They look like cat scratches, but much too big to be a cat scratch. They also didn't have a cat anyway. She seemed quite freaked out by it, so I went to the bathroom to view it myself. They're pretty much centered down my back. No way I can reach that. I just figured it had happened somehow earlier and I was only feeling it then for some reason. Then this happened again, a couple months later. I was playing a computer game in the room me and two other girls shared when I felt that stinging slash burning sensation again, exactly like before. Again, I tried to reach around and feel what was going on. I go to the bathroom and lift my shirt. I see three scratch marks, very similar to the ones before, but not quite as long and a little off to the side this time. I was a little worried, but I told myself it must be to do with the clothing I'm wearing. I put it out of my mind and never thought about it until years later, when I heard about this phenomena happening to many others. The next one happened before I moved out. My sister and I were in her room in the basement. It was late morning. Next to her room is the utility room, and then the stairs going up. Her bedroom door was closed. We were just chatting and hanging out in a room. We were about to go upstairs when out of nowhere we heard this growl or roar coming from the utility room area. It wasn't like any growl I can explain. It wasn't like a dog growl or a big cat's growl. If I had to describe it though, it had that deep or low sound of a large cat like a lion or tiger. And it had a similar volume to a large cat as well, but maybe closer to a bear as well. It's hard to explain. When I first heard it, I was so confused and immediately frightened. My mind was racing, wondering how on earth I was hearing what sounded like a wild animal in the house. We didn't have a dog either, by the way. Then my mind went, must be someone walking a large, aggressive dog outside, even though it didn't sound like a dog, and the sound is carrying through the walls kind of weird. I was just trying to make sense of it. Something primal inside kicked off, I think, because I became filled with dread. The growling got louder and it sounded like it was making its way towards her door. I look to my sister with panic and see that she's frozen on the spot. Her face was filled with fear and also confusion. I remember actually wanting to escape out of her bedroom window at that point. My sister told me to stop and be quiet, but I couldn't. The growling was getting louder and closer and seemed to be right outside the door now. I couldn't just do nothing. So I started screaming for my mum just calling out to her over and over. The growling immediately stopped when I did that. I kept screaming for a minute or so, then I stop and we listen. There's no growling anymore, it's totally silent. My heart is pounding. I tell my sister we have to run out. She tries to stop me, but I open the door anyway. I quickly look around and we don't see anything. So I race upstairs with my sister right behind me. We ran to my mum and told her. Another incident that happened a time, again, 
when I was in my sister's room. I had decided to sleep in her room that night. We had just gotten into bed and were talking. Almost as soon as our conversation ended, when the room was totally silent, a voice coming from the end of the bed broke that silence. It was a loud whisper, and it said my name as clear as day. Just my name, nothing else. I couldn't tell if the voice was male or female. It was just a very loud whisper. I immediately grabbed my sister and said her name. I was totally freaked out. She responded right away and said, I heard it. I was so terrified. I clung to her, trying to process what we heard and what could be the possible cause. She said, we mustn't give it any attention. I couldn't stay there though, so I got up to get a glass of water and to calm down. I slept on the couch that night. I was absolutely terrified. I must have been eight and my sister would have been around six. My mom would take us to our grandpa's house very often. Her mother, my grandma, passed away when my mom was only nine or ten years old in that house. There was this one time. I remember sitting in the living room with my mom, sister, brother and grandpa. My mom and grandpa were chatting while us kids were playing. I had to go to the bathroom really badly, but for some reason was afraid to go alone. I asked my mom to take me. But since she was talking to my grandpa, she told me to to ask my sister. My sister didn't want to go with me, even though I begged and begged. I finally just decided to go alone. The bathroom was a decent size. You walked in and you'd pass a huge sink countertop with a mirror, covering the wall. And then the toilet and tub would be at the end. I remember walking in. I can't remember if I closed the door or not, but I probably did. As I walked in, I gave a side-eyed glance to the wide mirror, and I saw my sister walking behind me, smiling. I turned around to yell at her for making me beg so much, and saying no, just to come after all. But when I turned around, she wasn't there. The bathroom was empty. It was so long ago, and I was so little, but I think I even remembered hearing her voice. I couldn't tell you for the life of me what she might have said, though. I ran back to the living room to tell my mum what had happened and ask my sister if she had followed me after all. My sister swears, even to this day, when I bring it up, that she never followed me into that bathroom. My grandpa doesn't live there anymore and I don't know if my mum ever believed me, although she does believe in the paranormal. I don't think my sister did follow me, but if she didn't, what did I see? My cousin Molly Bish went missing in 2000, a few months before I was born. They found her body three years later. Obviously, it took a big toll on my family. My mum was a teenager who'd just given birth and her anxiety basically tripled. When I was a kid, me and my mum lived with my grandmother and aunts, and all of them tell stories about how, when I was a little toddler, I would sit in front of open closets and talk to someone that wasn't there. This apparently happened like every day. Obviously, there was nobody actually in the closet and it gave my family the creeps. Imagine a little kid looking into a dark closet in the middle of the night, just laughing and babbling, reaching towards the darkness. My grandma was buds with a medium at the time and they told her that Molly's spirit was coming to visit me. Of course, this all happened when I was a little kid, so I don't remember much of it, but I do remember one encounter I had. It also happened to be the last encounter. I was around six or seven, laying in bed sleeping when I felt something wake me up. It wasn't a noise or touch or anything like that. More of an overwhelming wave of fear and a feeling of, you need to wake up now. I woke up and looked into my open closet, which was right next to the bed. And I saw a person standing there. I don't remember exactly what they looked like, just that they were very, very pale. But what I do remember was that they looked furious and I was terrified. I started screaming bloody murder and my family all came running in to check on me because they thought someone was attacking me. I was screaming and crying so hard that I was turning purple and my mom was worried I would suffocate myself. They brought me into the living room and once they finally calmed me down enough to talk, I told them I saw somebody standing in my closet. My grandma went back to my room to go check and didn't find anybody. 
but they all believed that I had seen something because my reaction was so strong. My grandma ended up calling the cops to check out the house and make sure there wasn't an intruder, as we had had some invasions before. The cops didn't find anything and just choked it up to me mistaking clothes in the dark for a person. And hell, maybe that's what it was. I'm 21 now, and I don't think I believe in ghosts, but that doesn't change the fact that this experience messed me up so bad that I slept with the lights on until I was 13 and still, to this day, 100% refuse to sleep with the closet door open. This happened back in 2010. I was in my last year in college at Arkansas Tech in Russellville, Arkansas. I was staying off campus in an apartment complex, not too far away, but hidden in some mountains about 15 minutes away from the university and another 15 minutes away from the Dover lights of Dover. I shared a two bedroom apartment with a friend and we'd always have things happening during the night. Dishes moving, kids talking and laughing who were not there. It became so much for my roommate that he would spend his time staying with his family who lived nearby rather than staying in the apartment. I, unfortunately, had family six hours away in Dallas, Texas and couldn't stay anywhere other than the apartment. My roommate would be gone and this would have been when Modern Warfare 3 and Black Ops was the go-to franchises. So I'd be playing well into the night, and the occasional silverware sliding on dishes in the sink noise would occur. We had no cats or dogs, so when it would happen, we would immediately know what was happening. This went on through the entirety of our lease. One night, it was particularly hot and humid, and our AC unit gave out. My roommate went with his family and I asked my girlfriend at the time if I could stay at her home in Paris, Arkansas, about an hour away. She agreed and I spent the night. A storm came that night and as I was asleep, I had a dream about a niece of mine who had passed away two years prior. When I was back home in Dallas, she would get her blanket and ask to sleep on a futon I had next to my room. I felt her presence as I was sleeping as if she was right next to me on my girlfriend's bed. All of a sudden, I woke up and through the lightning from the windows, you can see a small figure jump off of the bed and run out of the door. The entity had so much movement that my girlfriend woke up from the feeling and saw the entity run out of the door and into the hallway. We sat up for what seemed like hours, shocked and in awe, until we started seeing daylight from the windows and we went back to sleep. We didn't last long together after that and the occurrences at my apartment continued until I graduated and moved back home. Okay, so a little backstory. My house was built in the 60s or 70s by my great grandparents. As far as I know, they never saw anything strange and it wouldn't really make sense for them to have because it was a new house. And I'm assuming the land was free of any sort of spooky things. Both of my grandparents died in the house. They weren't murdered or anything. They just didn't want to go to a nursing facility. They had hospital beds in the den, and that's where they died. The hot spots of my house are the den, the living room, the hall bathroom, and my room. My best friend was staying one night, and we slept in the living room, which faces the highway. And the next morning, he told me about a man standing at the window with a cowboy hat on. He said he tried to wake me, but I didn't react. I'm assuming the man was my great-grandfather, who didn't wear cowboy hats as far as I know, but he was a state trooper, and they wear hats resembling a cowboy's here. The second sighting comes from my mom, and she's a bit sceptical, so I believe her 100%. She was taking a bath, and she looked up to see my great-grandmother sitting on a closed toilet, smiling at her. I asked my mom if she was scared, but she said she was just calm and it was strange, because she just faded away like she was never there. So those are relatively harmless, just simple sightings, nothing of concern. Well, my girlfriend has seen something twice while in my house, and it's not a calm feeling for her. She saw a face in the reflection, which could have just been a light, nothing bad. But the last night she was here, I was off to get food, and she walked out of my room to take a shower. And she saw something move quickly from the living room to the den. The absolute worst experiences happen in my room. 
I used to be able to hear breathing in my room. It would match mine, but I started to catch it and get it out of rhythm. And I know it wasn't my parents, because it was way too loud and not muffled. But I just blew it off, and I don't hear it anymore. One of the worst experiences is a recurring one. A sense of pure dread. Where I think I can move, but I feel like I'm not supposed to. And I can't convince myself to move, and last night was awful. I was on the phone with my girlfriend, and this was the first time I've spoken while it was there. We were having a normal conversation, and I hear my poster on my door move, and it was immediate dread. I told her I heard the poster move, and she asked if my fan was on. It was, but it was on low, and that never bothers the poster. And it set in. The inability to move freely, and the sense of dread. My eyes uncontrollably started watering as a wave of emotions washed over me. I told her, it's in here, and how I've had experiences with it before, and she told me to just look, but I told her that I don't think I'm supposed to. This went on for a while, and for the first time, I was able to see it, but not really. I told her, it's really scary, and she asked if I could see it, but I told her I couldn't see it, but I know what it looks like, and it's like nothing I've seen before, I can hardly describe it. I felt as though it got closer and a huge wave of shivers crossed my body. I was hot and cold at the same time, and then it was gone. Some slight residual fear, but I was able to confidently move. I don't know what it could be. It could just be my brain playing tricks on me, but I really don't think it is. The situation I'm describing occurs only rarely, like every two or three months. It always happens in the morning between 6 or 7 a.m. Every two weeks, my fiance has to get up at 5 a.m. for work and leaves at 5.30, so we can get to work at 6. These weeks, I start work at 8.30 and get up around 7.15. The thing that sometimes happens is that I hear him coming up the stairs with keys jingling in his hand, ready to open the apartment door which is right next to our bedroom door, hence why I can hear it. Also, I have very good hearing, if there isn't any background noise. I usually think that he must have left something important at home, and that's why he came back. But as soon as the door opens, I get a very bad feeling. He does his usual things, like taking off his shoes, putting his bag in the living room, doing these things as quietly as possible, so as not to wake me up. I always feel a weird tingling on my back when he enters the bedroom, He carefully gets into bed after taking off his clothes and gets under the blanket. At this point, I usually am horrified as he gently puts his arms around me and hugs me not too tightly. I always act as if I wasn't awake and do not even dare to move. I love when he strokes me, mostly on my back, and he knows exactly just how much I love it and starts doing just that. At this point, I gather my confidence to check the time on my phone, which is always next to me on the bed. I put my phone down and lay there for a few more minutes. I'm terrified because I know that I'm not asleep, but I'm also sure that anything that is behind me isn't my fiance. After those few minutes, I just can't wait any longer and either turn around or move my hand in a way that I would surely hit him without turning to look at him. As soon as I do this, the mattress on his side gets higher as if he just lifted up his weight. There's just air. Nobody is lying there next to me. I'm alone. I check my phone and sure as anything, only a few minutes have gone by. I don't know what it is, but it creeps me out. I'm sure that I'm not asleep and that I'm not just dreaming the whole thing, but I have no idea what this could be. I don't feel like it wants to hurt me. As I said, it just lays there, hugs me and then gets a bit back so it can stroke my back. Sometimes I get a kiss on my neck, but not always. All of these are things that I like. I should just enjoy it, but still creeps me out. It was a typical spring afternoon about five years ago. Laying on my couch in my room, the room was a master, so it was very spacious. I was very relaxed and comfortable and I closed my eyes for a moment. Then I opened them, and I felt paralysed. I could only move my eyes. My bed, 
TV, curtains, laundry, everything was exactly where it usually was. Nothing was out of place or unusual, except I couldn't move. And my vision was black and grey as if I was colourblind. I thought there was no way this was a dream. Is this what you call astral travelling? Did I do it? Is this what you call vivid dreaming? What's going on? As I asked myself these questions, my bathroom door next to me began to creak open. It was pitch black inside, and out of it came a jagged shadow figure that moved in a quick, bizarre way. The shadow figure moved closer and closer to me as I lay there helpless. I thought there was no way I would let this thing hurt me. Then, I felt a strong urge to sit up. So I fought the paralysis with determination to sit up. I began sitting up, but something wasn't right. I looked at my arms, torso, and to my surprise, my body was still lying on the couch. I had an out-of-body experience. The out-of-body experience was so weird and authentic. My spirit self looked like a NASA picture of space dust, and it was a gold colour. I felt like pure energy. I looked at the shadow figure and I said the first thing that came to my mind. Fuck you. After I said this out loud, the shadow figure went in reverse back to the dark and I became sucked back into my body, instantly waking up. I quickly looked around and everything was as it was in my dream. The experience is an accurate recollection. The story is true. I've never told anyone except a handful of people. I remember it to this day in detail and honestly think it was not a dream. It was a typical day and I was laying on my couch with nothing specific in mind. Next thing I know, I woke up in a dream. Before this happened, about a week ago, I was on a supernatural kick with my cousin. We were both very intrigued by the unknown and I wanted to learn more about astral travel. I've always had cases of sleep paralysis ever since I was a child and read an article saying it might be the beginning of astral travelling or something. After this experience in my room, I've never had sleep paralysis again, and I've never really tried to astral travel. Did I break through that reality and afterlife barrier? Was I in a realm to be explored? When I was a kid, I used to have very strange flashbacks and imageful thoughts that I can't explain to this day. They all felt like they were from the era of the 80s. It was certain external trigger factors that caused these flashbacks. For example, weather, mostly rainy and dark, certain smells, music, or certain places that suddenly seemed strangely familiar to me, even though I've never been there before. What I see are single images. For example, how I sit in an office or one of the typical computers of the 80s. How I rush through rainy streets in the evening, presumably after a long day at work. Or how I work at home on a computer-like typewriter. It was especially bad when I first heard a specific pop song from 1987. It sent shivers down my spine because I had another flashback. A very real one while I was lying in a hospital. I'm in my 20s now and these memories are significantly less vivid than what they used to be. But what I still experience is a kind of nostalgia that's triggered by certain music genres or movies, but doesn't bring up particular images. I read about anemia, a phenomenon of nostalgia which is currently described as particularly strong by millennials. Trends like dark academia, or the sudden popularity of 80s city pop, Polaroid etc, are said to be related to this. I believe that I have a vivid imagination, and I'm a very thoughtful person. But to this day, I still wonder how sometimes out of nowhere these images arise, and where this feeling comes from that I cannot put into words. Assuming that one believes in reincarnation, would it then be possible to assume that this diffuse feeling described as anemia is somehow related to it? I was around seven or eight when this happened. Usually after school, my mom would come pick me and my sister up and bring us back to her office. She'd finish up her work while we played with literally anything we could find, pencilers, staplers, you name it. We touched and played with it. I don't exactly remember how it happened, 
but we did it very often. If I recall correctly, it first started when my sister asked if I wanted to try something scary. She then picked up the telephone our mom rarely used and started calling a random number and would then pass the phone to me. On the other line, I would hear this unsettling raspy voice that sounded like an old man was dying and crying out in agony. However, what was weird is that I don't remember myself being spooked by it. Instead, I had a lot of fun with my sister and we'd both laugh at how it sounded. Being a kid, I tried to communicate with it by asking if it was okay or what its name was. With every question, there'd be a low, rumbly response. It was as if he was talking back to us. Fast forward a few weeks, my sister stays back at school for extra activities, so it would just be me and occasionally my cousin. Out of boredom, I'd dial the number, but what's weird is I record clearly that I didn't have an exact number to dial. All I had to do was just press random numbers on the telephone and it'll ring up the thing. This happened very frequently for all the times I was at my mom's office and even got my cousin to experience it. That's about it. Years went by and I eventually forgot about it until a few years back. And since then, I've just been thinking about exactly what the fuck happened and how it happened. I've tried asking my cousin who I'm no longer close to as well as my sister, but they've both denied that such an event ever happened and thought I was out of my mind. I tell it to many people as well, but get the same response. But deep down, I knew this shit happened. The closure I need is to find out how it happened. Was it my sister? Was it the phone? Was it the office? I was 22 years old when it happened. I can still remember the dream vividly. I was on a battlefield with a sword in one hand and holding a shield in my left hand. I was part of some army surrounded by soldiers like me and we all started charging forward when we heard the buzzing of a horn of some sort. After taking a few steps, I look up and see a rain of arrows falling down at us. I raise my shield. I was too late. I felt a horrible sting on my chest and I fell down on my back. Everything started to go dim. I could still feel the arrow piercing me more as it swung back and forth, so I held the arrow stick and broke it. Piercing stopped, but I felt my mouth getting filled with blood. I saw a vision of my mum come and hold my hand. She was crying. Then I felt all life just faded in my body and my eyes closed and everything went dark and silent. I woke up soaked. I didn't have any chest pain or any scars, bruises of any sort on my chest. All day, I was agonized by the experience, but the effect of the dream eventually faded out. A few months after I had that dream, I had a bowel infection and was hospitalized due to severe fever and dehydration. There in the emergency room, as an intern was listening to my chest with a stethoscope, paused and asked me, do you have a coronary disease? I said no. He said he heard a strange murmur and asked for further examination. They found out that there was a tear or hole in my heart septum three and a half centimeters in radius, and they got me an open heart surgery as soon as my bowel infection was healed. During my stay in the hospital, a lot of doctors and interns came to visit me. They asked me weird questions like if I'd ever been to a doctor's office or a hospital or clinic before. On the contrary, all my childhood I was struggling with fever that came almost every two months. I was an addict in my teenage years and I overdosed twice. One of which required strict heart monitoring as I had overdosed on stimulants. I was informed that almost all babies are born with that defect but in most cases, the body reconstructs the defected part of the septum by itself. And even if it doesn't, the radius of the defect does not exceed a few millimeters. They were so surprised how all those doctors that had examined me so far could have missed such a huge defect in the heart. They told me that because of that role on the spectrum, all the clean blood was going back to my lungs. They told me I should have experienced growth and physical activity issues, like not being able to run, etc., that I should have been no taller than 150 centimeters, weighing less than 40 kilograms, and probably must have been dead or bound to bed by now. But there I was, one meter, 76 centimeters, 55 kilograms. I was in the school swimming and basketball team, 
to my addiction started taking over control. I was constantly going into checkups before tournaments. All that drinking, smoking and substance abuse should have also had the worst effect on me. But there I was, hospitalized, just because of eating a fruit that wasn't washed properly. So this was back in 2019. It was a few months after my mum passed away when this happened. So at the time, my sister and her partner were living with us while they were house searching. It was a Friday night when my sister's partner asked if I wanted to go for a drive to pick up some stuff down in Sydney. Given he owned an R34 GTR Skyline at the time, I said yes, as Sydney was an hour and a half drive and it just had a big ass turbo installed on it. So anyways, after leaving Sydney, we get into telling scary stories. Now he scares easily, so he was a bit spooked when we pulled into the driveway. Now for context, the parking situation was my car would be reversed in the driveway. My sister's car was next to the driveway on the grass. My dad's was parked on the other side of the lawn between the fence and septic tank. And my sister's partner put his skyline on the lawn and his UT on the street next to it, essentially blocking the skyline from being stolen. So I had my car in the driveway at the time, which left the skyline at a weird angle. So the headlights were shining up into the garage. This was about 11 p.m. at night. After pulling in, both of us opened the doors when I caught movement from my peripherals. I looked through the windscreen to see two disembodied legs walk from the front door to the back of my car. There was no torso and no feet, just two legs strolling up to my car, then vanishing behind it. I was startled by it, but put it down to my mother just making her presence known. My mate didn't see it, but it scared him straight when I told him about it. My sister just shrugged it off and, like me, put it down to mum visiting, and that was it. A week later, my dad comes in at 7am and starts asking me about what I saw. Thought it was random, but I described it to him. He then sees the previous night he was sitting on his bed at around midnight. He had his curtains open for a breeze and was looking at his phone when he saw a full body shadow walking from my car across the lawn, right in front of his window, and then vanished behind his car. I feel about that one, but it's creepy as fuck. I was born and grew up in a town called Shrewsbury, in Shropshire, England. The town has a reputation of being one of the most haunted places in the world. The town is well over a thousand years old. A lot of the ruins of old buildings remain even in the town centre. Everyone I know growing up had some sort of experience, haunted or otherwise, at some point in their lives. So, getting to my most haunted experience that spans a number of years, these aren't my only experiences, but this is the one that has affected me the most. My grandparents have a house in the Bellevue area of the town that all of my family, my mother and her siblings, grew up in. The house was a back bedroom that gives off a vibe that you just don't want to fuck with. It's the only room in the house that has the door always closed and is now used as a storeroom that my nan refuses to enter alone. It was used when I was a kid as a spare bedroom for when me and my brother would stay over, but we hated being in that room. One night, me and my brother were asleep in there and I woke up just in time to look over and see the lightning fixture of the ceiling next to my head. I can even remember the feeling of the cold plaster touching my cheek right before whatever the fuck was lifting let me go. I hit the mattress and immediately started screaming, obviously, and my dad burst into the room to find out what happened. I told him everything, but he was obviously sceptical, but I even remember him saying that the room was very cold, even though the heating was on, and there was an odd feeling he just couldn't explain. My brother, who was asleep during my incident, said he had a dream that night of an old man standing over him, shouting for him to get out. And to this day, he's reluctant to talk about it because of how real it felt. Now, this is where it starts to get worse. I was told this was over a month after the first incident, but I was at home, in my house, on the other side of the town, and it happened again. Me and my brother at this time used bunk beds and I slept on the top bunk. My dad was downstairs watching TV and all of a sudden 
he said he got a feeling something was wrong. Then realised the feeling he felt was the same as it was when I had the incidents at my nan's. He ran upstairs and burst into the room, just in time to catch me falling from the ceiling. I had been picked up, lifted over the bed's safety rail, and was hanging with my head tilted towards the ground. And my dad burst in to see me hanging there in mid-air for a split second, before dropping, and he caught me. He was terrified and could never explain what happened. Nothing ever happened again until I was in my mid-twenties. My nan was heading out somewhere for an overnight stay, so I said I'd stay the night, feed the dogs, and sleep on the sofa. I did everything stated. Went to sleep on the sofa, but woke up in the morning in the spare room. At the back of the room, behind a load of storage boxes, it took me five minutes of moving the boxes out of my way to reach the door to get out. And to this day, now 14 years later, I have no idea how the hell I got in that room, over those boxes and to the back section of the room, without damaging anything. I've never been more frightened after waking up in all my life, and I've never stayed another night in that house since. My nan refuses to talk about that room. My granddad was the same prior to his death. I've no idea what happened in that house, what spirit or worse is living in that back room, but I'll never go back in that room for as long as I live. Number one, steps. Sometimes when I'm home alone, since the pandemic I've been working from home, I can hear footsteps outside my room in the hallway, like someone is walking out there. It doesn't really matter what time it is. It can happen during the morning, evening, or in the middle of the night. The steps always sounds like it goes up or down the stairs. I usually don't hear more than two to six steps at a time. They sound heavy. Just like when I, a friend, or a family member walk there. There's no wind, rain, or cats doing anything most of the time when I hear this. This happens about one to three times a month since autumn last year. Number two, voices. I hear voices where there shouldn't be any. I have my bedroom on the second floor of my house, and I can hear voices talking outside of my balcony door, day or night. And when I look out there, there's nothing there, and the voices stop. I do have neighbours, of course, and I hear them often, but the voices are very close to me. Kind of like people are outside, standing on my balcony and talking. There have even been voices in the other end of the house, outside my bedroom in the hallway with the steps. Again, I assumed it would be my neighbours, but they weren't around, and the voices sound too clear and close for it to be them. Usually their voices and the sound they make are very muffled, because they're far away. Like I mentioned above, this doesn't happen often. It's only happened three times thus far. Number three, cat growling. My cat's afraid of the hallway I've been mentioning before. He's been living here for over two years and he's always liked to sleep out there on the sofa. Since 2022 started, he hasn't been very keen on being out there anymore during certain times. He comes dashing into my room, hides under my desk where I do my gaming and work looks out to the hallway and just growls. If I pick him up, he keeps his eyes out to the hallway and still growls, and he doesn't want to be there. I go out to the hallway with him and close the door to my room. I put him down and I sat myself down on the floor. He goes into this defensive position and just growls. One time, his eyes and head were looking at something that seemed to move, following it with his head and moving his body accordingly while growling to feel safe. Similar stuff with the growling and hiding in my room has happened with other cats too before, but it was only when my neighbour's dog or something was making noise. Now, there's no noise coming from outside. All of this happens only after around 7pm and can last for around 30 minutes up to 3 hours. If I close the door, he tries to dig in. There are other rooms like a toilet, another bedroom and the rooms downstairs he can hide in, but he for some reason wants to hide in here. I don't feel anything myself when this happens. No matter if I'm in my room, in the hallway, with or without the cat. It happens and still does weekly, and sometimes several days in a row. Considering it happens so randomly, I don't think there's anything wrong with the cat, personally. 
Number four. A sighing sound and me running into something. I was alone in my room, the only one awake, and the house was fully quiet because animals and a family member were sleeping. I walk into the hallway so I can get to the toilet to brush my teeth. When I walk through my doorway, it feels like I hit something. Not like I walked into a wall or a person's shoulder, but like I walked through something. This time around, I also got a feeling of discomfort, which hasn't really happened up until now, even with the voices on the balcony and the steps I heard. I brush my teeth and go back to bed. Going through the doorway to my bedroom, I don't walk into something again. I lay down in my very big bed on the right side, from my perspective, and I also lay on my right side. There I lay, just thinking about life for a minute or two, when I suddenly hear someone, or something, sighing. Just once. The sound you can make when you take your clothes off and just jump onto the bed, being happy that you can finally rest after a hard day's work. I don't hear or feel someone laying down on my bed. Just that sighing or moaning sound. This made me feel very uncomfortable, so I took the cat and went downstairs to sleep in an extra bed on the floor. Number five, a voice saying no. Me and a friend of over 10 years are going to meet up. It's a thing I'm very excited about because we've only been talking to each other online for all this time. I wanted to talk to my friend about it further to plan the trip a little bit. Before we did, I sat on my bed a Tuesday night just talking out loud. She works Wednesday, Thursday and Friday. Maybe we could talk on Sunday. No. That's what I heard. No. I'm the only one home and I clearly heard a woman-ish voice or sound say no. I freak out, type to my friend and we do a voice call. The feeling of discomfort was obviously there, but went away very quickly when I got to talk to my friend. It wasn't so bad that I had to leave the room then and there. Could be because her voice and presence calmed me down. We decided to still meet up on Discord to talk about the trip that Sunday and nothing happened. Number six, glass falling to the floor. I was laying in my bed, not being able to sleep. It's just me in the room and a glass on my bedside table falls on its own and rolls down onto the floor. My cat's in the hallway and this time around, he actually growls and looks at my room, not wanting to come in, which is totally opposite to how it's been there. I wasn't even stretching or anything like that. I was just laying in my bed thinking about stuff and it just fell. While scary, I still spent the rest of the night in my bedroom. Number seven, another moaning sound. This is the last one I have for now. Two days ago, on the 13th of March around 3am, I heard a sound from the other side of my room which sounded like, it's hard to describe. It got louder and louder and just faded away. I was just laying awake in my bed and looking at random stuff on my phone when it happened. I froze, which hasn't happened before. I guess most people would if they heard a random sound, but this is the only time I felt really bad when something happened. Like once before, I took my stuff and moved to the bed downstairs. To those who don't know what a jinn is, a jinn is basically a demon that most Muslims believe in. When I was born, my mom would always see a black cat at the end of the hallway, leading to my room at 3am. And when the cat entered, I would scream out crying. But as soon as my mom would come into the room, she would see that the cat was nowhere to be found. Or sometimes, my mom would find me naked while I was asleep at the age of five. This happened till I was seven or eight years old, I think. Here's one of the stories that I still remember to this day that freaks me out. When I was five years old, I went to my aunt's house in Saudi Arabia. It was a new house at the time, so she had a housewarming party for just the women. As I was sitting with my mom and my aunt, I turned to my aunt and told her that in some areas of this house, she should not sit there at midnight because there was a robber. That's what I called the gin at the time. So she was confused and asked me what areas these places are. I told her the room was painted red, beside the washer, under the stairs, etc. When I finished, Talking, my aunt just stunned and horrified, since these are the places she felt like something was wrong and she needs to leave as soon as possible. 
When my aunt finished talking, we saw that all the lights in the neighborhood had gone out. So we all rushed to the streets and away from the darkness. As soon as we're all out, I was holding my mother's hand and tugged at it to get a hold of her attention. When I finally did, I told her that I feel something bad is going to happen to my uncle. Nobody knows this, but my uncle was on the second floor watching some TV to give the women their space and time. Anyway, as soon as I said those words, my uncle came running and screaming. As he calmed down, he told us that before the light shut off, he saw an elderly woman with long jet black hair looking at him. Just as he finished talking, we heard a crash and a little girl screaming. When we turned around, we found that there was a small Toyota truck that had hit my sister. But then the truck was nowhere to be seen. My mum was pregnant at the time and after what has happened with my sister, she had a miscarriage. So there's something, I think a spirit, that interacted with me for years in the house where I grew up. I've also seen it once, so I'll recount that first. When I was 12 or 13, I got up early on a weekend and was doing the chores I had neglected to do the evening before. At one point I turned around and there was a woman standing there in front of me, looking at me, clearly and distinctly. I was startled and gasped, but she disappeared after about a quarter second. She was about my height at the time, maybe a little taller, so around 5'3 maybe. Brown hair, brown green eyes. She was nude, but had a white towel wrapped around her like she'd just stepped out of the shower, and her hair was also wet. I do want to mention that there was plenty of light in the room, and there were no shadows for my mind to turn into a person. Like I said, I was startled, but not freaked out. After a few minutes, I went back to my chores. Not long after, my mom got out of bed, and I told her about what I saw. She laughed at first, but got a shocked look on her face when I described the woman. She said that she'd seen this person in a dream, just before waking up. We were both weirded out, but nothing really came of it. Later, I connected this with previous incidents, like hearing strange sounds in the bathroom at night, and feeling a presence in my room. For the sounds in the bathroom, my bedroom is immediately adjacent to it. You can't really enter it without me hearing you walk in. I knew it wasn't a family member, and we didn't have pets in the house. I'd hear water running, cabinet and closet doors open and close, shower curtains shifting, that kind of thing. This went on for years, from when we moved in, when I was 7, to when I was 14 or so. As for the presence in my room, it was something I'd sometimes feel when I was younger, like 9 or 10. I felt like something was standing a couple of feet from my bedside. There was nothing to see, of course, and I slept with a lamp on, but I still felt that I knew exactly where it was. I used to think it was an angel since I felt no fear or bad intentions from it, only calm and gentle vibes. That's actually true of all of this. I never felt any malevolence from anything inside the house. All of this stopped by the time I was 14. Not long, a couple years after I saw her. Anyway, not sure what I'm looking for by posting this, but I just wanted to share. I'd like to talk about it with some people, and I'd like to hear any speculation anyone has about her as well. To preface this, my friend's dad passed away when she was a teenager, and she very much believes in spirits. Before he passed away, her dad made a mirror, which until recently, my friend's aunt had. My friend and her aunt don't get along, and out of the blue, the aunt offered her the mirror. My friend accepted, but ever since, strange things were happening in her home. Her aunt claims to be a witch, and my friend thinks that she had done something to the mirror before giving it to her. So last weekend, whilst I was at my friend's house, she asked me if I would mind if she cleaned the mirror with me there. My friend used a smudge stick and did a cleansing and afterwards asked if I would do a spirituality test with her. She handed me a piece of paper and a pen and asked me to write the first thing that came to my head when she asked questions. She also had a piece of paper and a pen and was doing the same. She spoke out loud and asked her dad things like, tell us a number between one to ten. Tell us a month. Now, 
I'm neither a believer or non-believer. But in my head, all I could think at this point is statistically, we have around a 1 in 10 chance of saying the same number. I really, really wanted my friend to feel good about what we were doing, but I really doubted the legitimacy of it. My friend told me to ask a question, and for a second I hesitated. I wasn't sure if she meant for me to ask her dad a question, or to ask somebody I knew. The following thoughts went through my head. If I had to ask somebody, who would I ask, and what would I ask? In my head, I thought I'd ask my grandmother, and that I'd ask her to name a flower. I asked my friend who I should ask, and she said anybody, and I decided that this was about her trying to contact her dad. So I asked her dad to tell us a day of the week. As I was saying this, my friend said to me that a random word had popped into her head that wasn't a day of the week, but she felt like she needed to write it down. At the end of the questions, she gave me her piece of paper, and written on it instead of a day of the week was the word flower. I had not said anything out loud about who or what I would have asked. There's no possible way my friend would have known that I had thought that. I instantly get goosebumps, and this keeps playing on my mind over a week later. I've always been a logic-based person, but I just can't explain what happened. Back during the very beginning of the pandemic, around March of 2020, my entire household caught COVID. My sister had very mild symptoms. Loss of smell and taste was literally the worst thing she had. I was hit a little harder and was laid out for about a week. My dad, an elderly diabetic man, however, was hit pretty badly. We tried to keep an eye on him as best we could, constantly asking if he wanted to go to the emergency room. His cough was so bad at times he couldn't breathe, but he always refused, saying he didn't think it was that bad yet. I found out later that he would often wake up early during those days unable to breathe, and that was when he felt maybe it was time to seek help. But when he would find us still asleep, he didn't want to burden us and would just go back to his room. We were still recovering from our own bouts with COVID, but were well enough to watch over him, but he felt we were exhausting ourselves doing that instead of resting. The incident in question happened around the middle of the third week. I was starting to feel well enough that I could sit up and play games for a while without getting nauseatingly dizzy or my body or lungs aching. My dad had started off with symptoms similar to mine, but by this point, his cough had worsened to where he had trouble breathing and he had lost a lot of weight. Every day, we asked how he was doing and he claimed to be fine, in between fits of intense coughing. His constant refusal to go to the hospital kind of had my sister and I resigning to the possibility that one day we'd wake up to discover our father had passed away in his sleep. So I was in my room playing one evening when all of a sudden my power went out. My TV and console turned off, but not my lights. Assuming my sister had unplugged my power, my room was makeshift and there were no outlets, so I ran a power cord from her room to mine. I asked her if she had unplugged my power. She claimed not to have. When I left my room to inspect the cable, I heard my TV on. Confused, I entered and sat down to resume playing, and just after the game finished loading, it turned off again. I got up to make sure the cables were properly connected, but found them fine. So I disconnected and reconnected them, and returned to my room. For some reason, as I was walking to my room, I got the sudden urge to check on my dad. He had gone to his room early to lay down after eating a bit. Unfortunately, I was in gamer mood and just wanted to get back to playing, so I ignored the feeling. The TV turned on and as soon as I sat down, it turned off. At this point I was getting aggravated and as I left the place to replace the cables, my TV, once again, turned on. As soon as I stepped foot outside my room, I turned to enter and it turned off. I left and it turned on. I called my sister over and she was as confused as I was. I probably left and entered at least 10 times with the power coming and going. From the start to this point couldn't have been more than seven minutes. The entire time, my feeling to check on my dad kept getting stronger until I decided maybe something was trying to tell me to go check on him. I approached his room and since everything was off, including his TV, I assumed he was sleeping. 
Only, my father snores very loudly when he sleeps, and I didn't hear him. I entered, and he was laying on his bed. I called out to him, but got no response. Unusual, because my father has always been a light sleeper. I called him again, and still no response. My stomach was getting ready to drop when I called him a third time, and I heard him take a deep breath in, and he turned to look at me. He asked me what I needed, and I said nothing, just checking if he was okay. He said yes, and I went back to my room. I entered and turned the TV and my console on. They stayed on for a few minutes, when all of a sudden, tears started rolling down my cheeks. I don't know why, but all of a sudden I was overwhelmed with a sense of, I don't know, relief. But the emotion didn't seem like it was solely my own. I was glad I listened to my instinct to check on my dad, because I got the feeling that we could have lost him that night, but I couldn't understand why it overwhelmed me so much. I never told my father about this, but I did speak to my older sister who lives away from us with her husband and their seven kids. And she said that our dad told her that when he was at his worst from the virus, he had a dream that his father came to see him. My grandfather died before I was born, but all of my father's family has always said I remind them of him. Anyways, my dad said they spoke for a bit, and when he woke up, I was calling him. My sister says our dad believes his father came to take him. She didn't put much stock in his story then, but after telling her my story might have affected her or something, because since then, she's made much more of an effort to invite our father over to her house to spend time with his grandkids. I suppose the reason I've never told my dad is for fear that he might read too much into it. He's a very devout Catholic and treat me differently. I already get a lot of grief from my sisters who feel my parents favor me as the youngest and only boy. And I don't want him to start acting like my mom thinks I'm, like, blessed or something because of something that apparently happened when I was much younger. My mother's family claims to be sensitive to this kind of stuff. And sometimes it's hard to argue with them, but I've never really believed in the supernatural. It's been almost two years, however, and I still think back to this night. One night, many years ago, I think it was between the years of 2009 to 11, I was between 20 to 22 years old. I was on my old computer at night, and I was curious to see things about mysteries on the internet. I found a page with themes of magic and magical animals. So there was a phrase for being friends with an elf. I read it out loud. It was in an unknown language. And nothing happened at that moment, and I didn't give it importance at that moment. It was 10 p.m. At about midnight, I went to sleep. I usually wake up a lot at dawn because I have insomnia. I wake up every hour and a few seconds later, I go back to sleep. So it was about 1.30 a.m. I was sleeping and I opened my eyes and I saw how something was pulling up the duvet with which I was covering myself so as not to be cold that night. That something was about 20 centimeters and it was on top of my mattress. I couldn't see it well since it, all this happened in half a second. It was all dark, but there was definitely something very close to my face, covering me with the duvet up to my neck. Instinctively, I covered myself with the duvet and I started hitting the inside of it to try to get rid of that thing that had scared me. I, in there, super scared, took courage and quickly lowered the duvet to my hips and turned on a small television that I had near my feet in order to light the room. When the TV was on, I looked around the room and saw nothing. I was still in a state of panic and said out loud, I don't want to see anyone else, any elves or goblins. Since that night, nothing has appeared in my room. Two years later, I heard that my brother, who slept in a nearby room, told me that he saw out of the corner of his eye an elf, small and dark, running around from his closed door to the also closed window. He said that this happened in a split second. All this happened around 2 or 3 a.m., so I asked him when it happened. I did the math, and I think it was the same day and night that I kicked that poor elf out of my room to never see him again. From the looks of it, elves can walk through doors and windows. My aunt lives in a two-story Tudor-style house that used to be a restaurant. The upstairs was always a living quarters. 
It was built in the 80s and is in the Appalachian Mountains. Here's a chronicle of what's happened so far in as best of an order I can provide. When I was a kid, I used to see a witch sitting in a rocking chair. She was a haggard old woman in black with a shawl covering her head. Think Baby Yaga, not Broomhilda. The attic accesses, you know the can with the fall downstairs, started flying open and rattling after 10 years of being quiet. Marbles from inside cabinets would appear and roll across the floor when only my aunt and uncle were home. Opaque black humanoid shadows would crawl across the floor and walls. When I was 13, I was piddling around waiting for the adults to be ready to go. I saw the broken clock on the wall that had been hanging in my aunt's homes forever and decided to mess with it and turn the time to noon. We all left the house. The clock that had been broken for years returned to its original time. I was the last to leave the house and the first to return upstairs when we were done going out. I was laying upstairs in the living room when I heard someone walk to the doorway of the adjacent bedroom. I opened my eyes to see my cousin's mom peeking out from around the doorframe at me, smiled and went back in the room. A few minutes later, I heard walking upstairs. They creaked so loud it's impossible to avoid hearing someone use them. She walked to the living room to drink coffee. I didn't hear her walk downstairs or see her leave the bedroom. I was facing the hallway she would need to use the exit. Go down, get coffee and come back up. I still don't know who or what was looking at me. I was sitting in the old restaurant on a computer around midnight when from a bottom shelf, three industrial sized mixing bowls flew across the room at me. I watched closely to see who did it. No one ran by but I heard the stairs creak as if someone was going up. There was no way to get from the bowls to the stairs without being seen for a moment. I ran up to the top of the stairs to go into the apartment with the adults to find the door was dead bolted shut and all the kids were locked downstairs. We were teenagers. The apartment was complete access to walk inside the outer walls via two to four foot doors scattered about the rooms. We were playing hide and seek once and hid in the walls. My aunt jerked me out by my arm yelling not to. After I apologized, I asked why and she refused to say, which is unlike her. She never leaves a kid without an explanation. There's an abandoned service station across the street from the house. We went exploring because in all our years at the property, we had never seen anyone tend to it when an old car comes flying down the mountain. We run and a man gets put wearing nothing but underwear. He waves at us unblinking and smiles creepily. Never saw him again. I live in a small town on Lake Superior. I've known of several supposedly haunted lighthouses around the area, but I was unaware of any activity in the lighthouse in the city that I live in. So I was pleasantly surprised when I heard they were offering paranormal tours of the lighthouse. I really didn't expect much to happen, but I decided that it might be fun for my wife and I to go. The first time we went was a pretty wild ride. That story's for another time, but our crew got several intelligent responses via EVP recordings. But the second time was pretty neat. Long story short, it's believed that the spirit of a child resides at the lighthouse. There was a group of six of us and we were all in the basement. One of the investigators leading the tour was trying to contact the child spirit. A fellow tour goer had eagerly volunteered to lug around the SLS camera for the past hour and a half. I tried to carry around the box where spirits would pick out words, but right when I grabbed it, it said wrong. And that was a huge nope for me. The tour was coming to a close without him noticing anything on the camera at all. I was standing across the room from the man with the SLS camera when I noticed that the hair on my arms was standing on end and my skin was tingling. I went to say something to my wife, but before I could, she grabbed me and told me her opposite hand had gone ice cold. Seconds after, the guy across the room with the SLS camera called me to come over. I walked over to find that there was a small stick figure that appeared to be holding my wife's hand, the hand that she had said was freezing. It wasn't like a flash and then it was gone. I stayed for several minutes. My wife would move over and it would show up again.
I remember sitting on my bed, either watching Netflix or playing something on my PS4. I can't remember exactly. But all I heard outside my window was cow noises, like really close to my window. I was getting freaked out. I texted my cousin about it and she asked if there were cows near my home. I told her yeah, but not that close where I can hear them. She told me that maybe one of them got out, but it also didn't really sound like a cow, if that makes any sense. It sounded like a woman in stress as well, mixed in with a cow. I don't know, it just freaked me out. And my room is a whole story itself. My uncle literally died in my room, and the bed frame he died on was given to me for a while, but I ended up giving it to my sister. And speaking of my room, it was the hottest room in the whole house. On certain days, you could open both windows and still somewhat be hot. I don't know if those accounts are paranormal. I know something being cold ones. Just thought I'd mention it. Speaking of my sister, here's story number two. I remember being in my sister's room, scrolling through musically. When suddenly, in the corner of my eye, I saw something in the doorway. It wasn't just standing there. It was crawling on the floor. It looked like a woman. She had greyish skin, long black hair, and she was bent over like spider style, if that makes any sense. She was wearing a long white dress. As soon as I saw that, I literally started crying. I jumped out of bed and slammed the door shut. I jumped back on the bed and hid under the covers. Story number three. I remember being in the kitchen with my sister we were jumping around, acting like idiots, when suddenly we both heard something outside the window. It sounded like a chainsaw going off. I peeked out and nobody was there, but it was so close to the window, like really close. Me and my sister just ran towards my room and locked the door. Story number four. I was in my room sitting down on my bed, about to go to sleep. I opened my eyes a little and saw something in the corner of my room. It was a man in a hat. I immediately turned on my little lamp beside my bed. When I turned on the light, it wasn't there anymore. I was so freaked out and I didn't go to sleep. And just recently, I looked up man in a hat paranormal and it turns out it has something related to childhood trauma. Explains a lot. Story number five. Every single time I'd go into my kitchen and get something from the fridge, I'd feel like I'm being watched. I always felt that in my house, but whenever I got something to eat or drink, it would feel stronger. I don't know how to explain it, but it just felt off. Speaking of that, I remember getting something to drink. It was on the top shelf. And the way my fridge was made, I could kind of climb up to it. There was a little room for my feet. And as soon as I was about to get it, I felt something touch my shoulder. I thought it was my dad or mom, but whenever I looked, nobody was there. I just climbed down and ran to the living room. This experience happened about four or five years ago. I was 18 or 19 at the time, and I've always wondered about it. I was on vacation with my family, brother, cousins, aunts and uncles, etc. We were staying in a beach cottage for a week. My brother, cousin and I all slept in the same room. As the youngest family member, I picked the short straw and slept on the cot, while my brother and cousins slept in the two beds that our room provided. One night, I was sleeping in my cot when all of a sudden, I felt this hand on my chest start to pull me off my cot onto the floor. It scared the shit out of me, and for whatever reason, when I woke up, I called to my cousin who, to my surprise, was already awake. When I told him what had just happened to me, he said that seconds before I called him, he had a dream of a dark figure crawling on the ceiling and staring down on me. After he woke up from this, he said that no more than 30 seconds went by before I called him. This completely freaked us, and we ended up sleeping downstairs on the couch. Normally, I would chalk this up to sleep paralysis, but the fact that my cousin and I both had related experiences makes me question if this was paranormal in nature. We've also experienced lights moving around in the room in years prior, but I always thought it was some illusion of the window shades or something that has freaked us out before too. In the summer of 2016, 
I attended a graduation party in my hometown. At around 10 p.m., I decided to say my goodbyes and head down the mountain myself. As I reached the summit of the mountain, my headlights illuminate a horrific scene to my right. A wrecked red sedan with the front window shattered and a man laying in front of the car. I steered quickly out of the way since his head was nearly on the white line of my lane. A few feet away from the scene, I pulled off into the truck lane, put my hazards on and stared in shock in my rear view mirror. A few seconds later, I see car lights coming my way, slowing down at the scene. I try to wave them down, but it's dark, secluded, and I'm in shock. It was unsuccessful. They slow down, look at the scene, and hit the gas full speed down the mountain. After they passed me, my anxiety kicked in, and I too fled the scene at full speed. I called my boyfriend at the time, and didn't tell him what I saw. I needed to distract myself. About eight minutes later, when I arrive home, I wake up my parents and waste no time getting everyone in the car to drive me up to the summit. In the meantime, we called the police. I didn't do this earlier because I was fresh out of high school and didn't know if I would have to stay at the scene, if I would be questioned, in trouble for being out so late and so young. I panicked. By the time my parents and I make it back to the summit, there's nothing there. It was less than 20 minutes. I got out in shock looked for broken glass from the windshield and any other signs that someone had been hurt there. Nothing. Now I'm freaking out because I look as if I'm hallucinating all of this. My parents call the police again and we left as the emergency services arrived. I've talked to a few people from my hometown and they told me they wouldn't be surprised if I saw something paranormal because of all the accidents that have happened there, I personally know a few people who have died driving on that road. The only explanation I could think of was that it was an elaborate staged accident to lure someone out of their car. But the windshield was broken. His head was by the white line. If he wasn't dead already, he was placing himself in serious danger. The airbags were depleted and the car was smashed by a telephone pole. How could someone stage that and be gone in less than 20 minutes? Even if the wreck did just happen, how would that have been able to walk away from the scene? and not leave his car or other evidence behind. So I grew up in Sunnyvale, California in the early 2000s, and I loved going to our city's Toys R Us as a kid. However, there were always rumors about it being haunted. I remember some kids at my elementary school telling stories about how boxes would inexplicably be pushed off shelves by a ghost in the store. I always thought it was just kids telling stories to try and scare each other. I never thought much of it and just considered it an urban legend since nothing paranormal had ever happened to me in that store. But when I was about 13 years old, I had a strange experience in that Toys R Us that made me change my mind about the whole legend being a hoax. On the day in question, My family was going to Toys R Us because my little brother wanted to buy something. My best friend and I decided to go too because we hadn't been to that store in years. While we were waiting for my little brother to find the toy he wanted, my friend and I were exploring through all the aisles in the store, messing around and having fun with toys. Finally, we reached the back of the store and by this time we were bored with looking at toys so we just stood in the aisle and talked. Eventually, The topic of the store being haunted was brought up, and while we were talking about it, a box suddenly flew off the shelf behind my friend, almost hitting her in the back of the head. This was pretty freaky, especially since we had just been talking about the supposed Toys R Us haunting. We weren't too scared at this point though, since this could easily be explained by the box not being placed on the shelf very well and falling off due to gravity. Although I did remember seeing the box before it fell off the shelf, I remember it looking like it was pretty stable. But we just brushed this off and continued talking. However, a few moments later, the lights that were hanging from the ceiling above us began violently shaking back and forth. My friend and I stared up at the ceiling, frozen in shock. After a few seconds, the lights stopped shaking and we both stared at each other like, what just happened? I started to feel more uneasy but the incident with the lights could also be explained by something normal. 
The area where we were had a second floor above it, which I think was a staff area. So I tried to tell myself that someone must have been doing something on the floor above us that caused the lights to shake by accident. In any case, my friend and I moved to the next aisle over, just in case the lights might fall on us. The aisle we were in now had a lot of stuffed animal toys in it. Both of us were just standing there talking about the things that had just happened to us when a toy monkey on a shelf next to us began moving all on its own and making a creepy laughy sound. We both stared at it in disbelief and we stared at each other and started screaming. We sprinted out the store as fast as we could. But once we got outside, we couldn't just leave because we had to wait for my brother to finish buying his toy. We waited in the parking lot and tried to rationalize what had just happened. We talked about it and decided that the monkey toy could have been one of those motion activated toys. And so we must have set the toy's motion sensor off somehow. But we didn't know this for sure. So my friend and I somehow worked up the courage to go back into the store and inspect the monkey toy to see if it really was motion activated. We carefully studied the toy and read its package, but there was nothing that mentioned it was motion activated. The only way you could make the monkey move and talk was if you pressed a button on its body. There was no way we could have pressed the button by accident. When we realized it truly went off all by itself, we started screaming all over again and ran out of the store for the last time. I'd like to preface this by saying, while I sincerely respect everyone's opinion and to give me advice in any form is appreciated, if you're unwilling to suspend your disbelief and would rather suggest I have a mental illness and to seek help, thank you, but I don't need your comments. I personally sought out being hospitalized and evaluated and was told I didn't have one. I did immediately take that path to address this when it first began. I can infrequently and at random hear very short snippets of other people's thoughts. Yes, I do not have a mental illness. This has been going on for about two and a half or three years and first, for quite a while, I ignored it. Like I was in denial and I doused myself in skepticism and I worried for my brain. As time passed and it continued, I gave up on that. I had and will always have that little skeptic that's telling me it's not real. What I hear are one word thoughts or very short sentences, completely at random, very sporadically, coming from people in my vicinity. It's not a crazy, wild, powerful superpower. It's never going to be helpful to swindle millions or win big. It's literally just completely random, useless, mundane shit. I probably hear a foreign thought one or two or less times a week. It's so unpredictably random and infrequent that to study it, experiment or try to solidly prove it will be like catching lightning in a bottle. It started around about a week ago. For some background, I live in a 1920s home. I live with two other people who are currently out of town and if it's relevant, the house flooded a couple of weeks ago and there's black mold but very sparse. Also, the back door doesn't lock, so it could be someone coming in. Also, there is an attic which I don't have access to, which is also supposedly flooded after the maintenance man came to have a look after the flooding of the house. A few weird things have been happening. For example, today, I wake up in the morning and go to the bathroom and keep in mind again, my roommates are out of town. I find the pot plant on the top shelf has been knocked over. Keep in mind that I do own a kitten but she can't even push down a 250 grand container. She's only five weeks old and can't jump onto the bed without help. The toilet seat is also up, which as a female, why would I ever do that? I work from home most days. I go into the kitchen for a drink and the microwave door is wide open and not closed. I don't use the microwave at all. A few other things have been happening as well. I'm quite particular about how I position my soaps in the shower. I've been noticing for the past week that they haven't been in the spot I left them in. I thought I was going insane, so I started taking photos before and after my shower to confirm where I've left them. They are definitely moving. 
Not to mention that there's a brown boot mark on the whole tile when again, I don't leave the house nor I am that, that size shoe. I've checked with all of my shoes and none of them match. I like to order Subway. I'm a bit of a Subway fiend. I ordered a foot long, but half of it to eat later. I've popped that in the fridge and never got round to eating it as I had a few work events that I had to attend in person. Very rare. The Subway I noticed is also gone today. No one has been home, so I'm confused who ate it. Also, to make me sound even crazier, I ran out of makeup remover the other day and I went to reach for a cleanser that I don't like that I got as a free gift from a pharmacy and I've noticed that it's literally been duplicated. I now own two of these very specific cleansers that look exactly the same. I never went out of my way to purchase this product, considering that I don't even like it. Why would I buy it again? When I was a 12 year old child, I had this weird experience that I could never properly explain. It was a summer night. I live in a tropical country, so it was particularly hot that day. I played the entire day inside water as a kid should, then at night went to sleep. All lights were out and the air conditioning was on full potency, an old and loud machine that's probably as old as me. I was looking at the dark ceiling, waiting for the need for sleep to come. At that moment, I noticed something. There was a spot, a dark spot on the ceiling that was even darker than the rest of the room. And to my surprise, it started to move. Went to walls, then floor, then walls again, just as my eyes kept following it. Then it stopped and accelerated again, directly to the ceiling portion right above me. I was paralyzed, probably because of the usual fear that a kid would feel. And there I stayed for a few moments. I can't say for certain if a few seconds or minutes had passed, but definitely felt like a long time. My eyes fixed on the dark spot, and I felt that it was fixed without eyes towards me. Suddenly, it jumped. Not the walls or the floor, but to me. And for a brief moment, I could see the shape of a mouth, in a motion as if to bite my face. At the exact same moment, the loud air conditioning turned off. I screamed and waited in panic for my parents to come to the rescue. I was on the same bed, too shaken to move. My parents entered the room to see if everything was okay. Well, I was okay. Scared, but okay. I was more calm after I had talked to them. Apparently, the electric power of the entire house went off. Nothing else happened. I even actually slept at some point after that. Back when I was a small child, I lived in this two-story home in a small town in California, up these hills in the orange groves. The way the house was set up is there's just a kitchen and living room on the bottom floor, and there were stairs on the back wall that led up to one huge bedroom with a bathroom. The room was shaped kind of like an L. So I had my own bed next to the bathroom door, and my parents were on the other side. One night, I had my cousin over for a sleepover. It was pretty dark in the room. The bathroom light was on and just a little cracked open giving us some light. My parents were asleep and my cousin and I were laying in bed talking when all of a sudden we saw this completely black shadow figure walking by the bathroom door. I vividly remember what it looked like. He looked to be a man. He was really hunched over and for some reason had his hands out in front of him. He had long fingers pointing down. My cousin and I both grabbed the covers and hid as long as we could. We whispered to each other that we thought someone had broken in. We were terrified and didn't know what to do. We listened under the covers for a while and it was nothing but dead silence. We hid until we managed to fall asleep. By the morning, we had woken up and told my parents everything that someone had broken in. Of course, my mom didn't believe us and said we were imagining it all. My dad, on the other hand, I'm not sure what he was thinking because he had multiple paranormal experiences in this home that we later found out about because he didn't want to scare us at the time living there. That's a whole other story though. Fast forward a few years later. We moved to another home in the next town over. Here, I had my own bedroom. 
I was scared of the dark, so my mom would always leave the hall light on for me, with my door wide open, and it would light up the whole wall where my closet is. One night, while laying in bed, once again, I saw the same exact shadow figure I had seen. This time he was in the light. My heart stopped. It was this big black fog that I can completely see through. I couldn't make out any face shape or features. He was once again hunched over with his hands out in front of him, long fingers just walking slow and casually. I was terrified and I cried myself to sleep that night under my covers. This was the last time I had seen him. So a couple of years ago, I lived in another city and this particular period, I was actually staying at a friend's dorm room. My friend's girlfriend had a dog and one night she asked me if I could walk it. So I did. It was the perfect opportunity for me considering I had a pre-roll. I really wanted to smoke, but I didn't want to upset the neighbors. The dorm was located near a lot of factories and a few houses, but it's basically surrounded by big fenced factories and industrial buildings. So I was walking and smoking, and I went down the side road, not a long way from the dorm. But then I went back to the main road, given the whole vibe was just creepy. And there was nobody around, and I was a little paranoid maybe. When I came back up to the main road, suddenly I felt like somebody was behind me, but not right behind me. However, I felt a presence, so I turned around to look. Upon looking right away, I see someone at the corner I had just passed when coming back to the main road. I look away again because I don't want to be rude and stare. However, this is also when I think about what I saw. Something was just off. I could only see the silhouette of a person, given that it was dark and it was right under a big road light. When I reviewed inside my head what I just saw, it appeared this person was hovering and with their arms slanted, and the silhouette of their hair looked like an afro. It was giant, so I look back. This is maybe five seconds since I turned around and the person was gone. So, I almost shit myself given that I was high. I called my friends and told them that I saw a ghost. They didn't really believe me and told me that maybe somebody was trying to make me freak me out. The thing is, I used to go to rehab and I met a lot of great but troubled people at rehab. I once met a guy who was only there for a few weeks but I connected with him so much. He was a very passionate dude with a lot of love for life and spirituality, but he was a shattered person and sadly he hung himself. He hung himself at his home. This would be just about 100 meters from where I saw this person, but my friend never had an afro. So I really thought about that. Maybe his head was just disfigured. I obviously started Googling all sorts of stuff about this particular area. Then I found another scary thing. There had been only two clown sightings ever in the city I lived in, and one was a couple of years ago, in a parking lot maybe a kilometer from where I saw this person. So yeah, either way, ghost or clown, I'll never forget that day. I personally have shifted into believing that it was somebody pretending to be a clown and scaring me. This is just really scary to me, given that I was all alone where I was at, and at the end, they were standing, it really did look like they were floating. I don't know you guys, I just really wanted to share this because it's a little creepy. My actual question to you regarding this story is whether or not y'all think it's just a clown, or maybe it was actually my friend. Could there be another explanation for the afro, and could it be maybe a disfigured head? I'm not an expert at all, but I'm trying to rule out the fact that my friend showed himself to me. Ever since I can remember, I've been having nightmares with a black shadow man, who whenever comes closer to me in those nightmares, says to me, you're mine, you can't escape, I'll always find you, I'll get you, you'll see, you'll never escape, I'm always here, and things along those lines. I was around 14 to 19 back then. It's gotten to the point where I kind of learned how to wake myself up whenever I'm having nightmares and I see a black shadow figure that could be or not that shadow man. I start screaming inside my nightmare. Wake up now, get up, wake up, please wake up. And then 
people who's been in bed with me. Tell me that I start murmuring until I end up screaming, ah, and wake up as if I'm running a marathon and with bradycardia, fast heart palpitations. And it takes me around five to 10 minutes to calm down and understand the fact that I'm not in my head anymore, but in real life. Last time I dreamed of it, I was in total darkness and I felt like I fell onto a bed and to my right, there was a window and a strange silhouette with a strange figure. And I stupidly became curious of what it was and came closer to the window. And when I realized it, the face of it was right in front of me. It seemed human, but with black irises, no hair. The skin was black, pitch black, like space black, but it was so black it seemed like it was a void. Like it had no skin at all, but you could still see a bit of texture. And then he asked, more like motioned me, to follow him through a door. Which I effing didn't, because in that precise moment, my boyfriend woke me up. Because I was talking, saying, wake up now. Wake up now, right this moment. And I couldn't breathe. And my heart was beating so fast, my whole chest hurt for so long. Two ex-boyfriends had encounters with a black mass in our room that was near me. XA talked to it in his sleep, and according to him, the thing told him it wanted to talk to me and be with me, to which he responded, no, we're Christians, so he reprimanded and vanished it in the name of Jesus and demanded it to leave. After a couple of hours, he fell asleep on the couch, sleepily got up and said things like, who are you? What do you want? Why her? No, she will not. I ask you to leave. You will not talk to her. Stop now and go. What's your name? Apparently the thing said its name and he just replied, oh. And then he snapped out of it and didn't remember at all what he said or happened. I did it because I was in the kitchen making dinner, petrified. I didn't move not even one millimeter because I was so afraid. I didn't want to see anything. Then while eating, he randomly said, do you know anyone named the thing said. I said, no, I don't. I was 20 years old back then. Then at 21, XB and I were sleeping in his house. It was sometime around 2.30 to 3 a.m. And he got up to like, you know, have sex. And when he came onto me, I saw a face that made me push away and scream. I went under the blanket, scared as fuck. And I heard him say, what the fuck? Who are you? What do you want? How did you enter this place? XB came to the bed next to me and he started looking at me like he wanted to kill me. And I thought that it possessed him for fuck's sake. And then he looked behind me and said, I want you out now. And I felt a sudden urge to leave, to run and go home with my mum. I felt unprotected and terribly vulnerable. I was only wearing a pair of panties and I ran to the door of his house and stayed there in sudden realization I was basically naked. XB came after me with a shirt in my bra and said, we're getting out of here, okay? Let's get in the car and let's head to your house or just drive around. We walked back to his room and my body didn't enter. Couldn't move past the door. I heard a voice in my head that said, do not enter. You cannot enter. And XB noticed and looked inside the room and saw that black mass figure in my side of the bed. And he said, fuck it, use my shorts. Let's get going. We were half naked driving around the city until it was 7 a.m. and the sun was visible. We came back to his house and it felt different, light even. We slept and that was it. We never saw it again. Fast forward to 27, present time. I moved out of my country and in the past three years, I've never seen it again. Never heard anyone say they've seen it or felt it when around me. But very rarely I have nightmares with it just standing there far from me, just there. It hasn't said anything of the sort like he used to say when I was a teenager. My long-term boyfriend has woken me up once or twice a month saying I'm murmuring. He knows he has to wake me up when he hears me. It's a rule I've imposed on everyone who ever sleeps with me. Now, my younger brother has been having nightmares with a black shadow man chasing him down. He's woken up my mum several times at night screaming. It happened about six years ago. I still think about it to this day that something was bothering me at this house I used to sleep at. The story was 
that I had sometimes had a sleepover at my wife's house, girlfriend at the time, and she and her family had recently moved in for about one or two years. The first occurrence was when I was sleeping in the living room. We were just done watching movies and she would go sleep upstairs in her room and I'd be sleeping in the living room. It was probably late, around midnight, and as I was laying down with my eyes closed, I felt some sort of presence at a distance behind me. I felt like someone was there walking around and I thought, oh, it's probably her. And shortly after, she called out my name. I began to turn around and about to answer her call out and to my surprise, there was absolutely nobody. It gave me quite the goosebump that I immediately texted her about it and so she told her little brother to accompany downstairs and sleep on the other sofa. We did talk about whether the rest of her family felt some sort of presence and at the time, nothing happened so far and then it was just me. Second time around when I slept over, her parents were on a business trip so I got to sleep in her room. We were cuddling to sleep. She's fast asleep, but I was still trying to, as I kind of have a hard time sleeping, as I think I'm sensitive in sensing what's about to happen. Not sure if that's a thing, but anyway. That night, I felt some presence again in the room. Kind of similar to the living room, but a bit more intense. This time, my heart was pounding. I began to feel two sets of hand at the bottom of the blanket, slowly climbing up its way to me. The feeling truly intensified, I felt some sort of face or rather the head of this thing against me. Its presence was so close. Then it did something. It was probably trying to shout or something. I don't know, but it felt like it opened its mouth to suck the life out of me or my energy. I wasn't sure, but when it did that, my body went paralyzed. I guess you can say it's the night terror, as I can't speak. But the only thing I could do was breathe as fast and loud as I can to wake my girlfriend up so that she could move or nudge my body in order for me to regain back control. I was wondering till now, what exactly were I dealing with? I felt like this thing targets only me. So I worked in a large bunker complex from World War II and stayed for a night shift the other day. I'm an editor, so I had headphones on most of the time. Every now and then though, I thought I heard some music from somewhere, but brushed it off as just me being tired. At around 1am, I went for a smoke in an area that basically only me and my bosses can access. It's an old stairwell used to transport heavy cargo that doesn't fit in any elevator. As I approached the door, I once again heard music, but this time, clear as day. As I opened the door, it got really, really loud like as if someone was sitting with a violin at the bottom of the stairwell. I work on the fourth floor. No other floor has direct access to the stairwell except the very bottom. Needless to say, I was weirded out but thought, huh, maybe some composer uses their free time and practices here. Yeah, I know. Kind of stupid assumption, but the only explanation I had in the moment. The semi-social person I am, I went down to see who was playing and said hello, since the music was actually kind of beautiful. It reminded me a bit of the classical Bioshock music and as, was, as far as I can tell, played by one single person on one violin. However, after I stepped down for like four or five steps, the music abruptly stopped. Not in the way that you stop a recording. I could actually hear clattering and folly sounds from handling a string instrument. I went down all the way and looked for any open doors or some way for this person to have gotten in here. However, there was nothing and no one in sight that would suggest someone just played the music there. So, kind of disappointed, I went all the way back up. Bunker's floors are about double the normal height, so I had to walk up around six floors. But just as I stepped back into our hallway, the music started again. So I went down again. Surely enough, there was no one there. At that point, my confusion turned into kind of being creeped out. I double checked if every door was locked, which they were, and if the elevator, which had been out of service for a while, worked again. Maybe that's how they got there. But no, it was still stuck below ground floor as it had for almost a year. So I thought, okay, every door was locked and the only way in here is to have a key through one of the doors on each floor, five floors in total. So I went back up and waited, since I was sure to hear someone unlock a door and step into the stairwell. 
No. I reached the top, and at that precise moment, I heard weird violin sounds first, like someone mildly plucking the strings. Then the music set in again, and it was loud, like really loud. So I went down again, only to find nothing again. At that point, I was actually wondering if I was just too exhausted and started to hallucinate or something. That's how I explained the music to me for the rest of the night. It was only the next morning that my stupid brain realized that I recorded the music the first time I heard it loudly. So there's no chance of this being just in my head. My mother was very sick for several years before she passed. She contracted mononucleosis at 50. And when this is contracted as an adult, it can cause a complication of organ failure. She needed a liver transplant and was also having issues with low kidney function due to the illness. She had been in the hospital this entire month before she passed. She seemed like she was getting better, well enough to survive a transplant. She was transferred to the hospital to get her ready for the transplant, but contracted COVID and took a turn for the worst. Now for the premonition part. She had been transferred to a hospital that was a two and a half hour drive, so I could no longer visit her every day like I had been. I was planning on visiting her the following Saturday, but on the Wednesday before, I just had a feeling that I had to take the next day off to go see her because she might not make it until Saturday. I sent a message to my boss and put in a request for the next day, Thursday, off. That same night around midnight, I got a call from my stepdad. He spoke with the hospital. They didn't think she would make it. Her lungs were failing and they had to be put her on an elevator ventilator. There was also a blood clot that cut off the blood to her colon and intestines. We had to get there. I called my brother, we drove her, and got there around 2 or 3 a.m. She couldn't open her eyes or speak, but could nod her head yes and no. She could still hear us. We got to say goodbye and how much we loved her before she lost consciousness. She passed that Friday afternoon. She didn't make it to Saturday. The second part is more like what I would consider a real premonition, not just a bad feeling. This is from my brother. He said I could share it. He had a dream that we were all at our grandma's house. There was a bunch of brush at the end of their driveway. It's not in real life. And there was a deer out there. My grandpa, who just passed a little over a year prior, gave my brother a chainsaw to clear the brush and told him to take care of the deer. We all had to agree at the hospital to have them turn the machines off. Her intestines were deteriorating. She needed surgery, but she would never survive. She couldn't get the surgery as she couldn't live if she didn't get the surgery. We were able to ask my mother multiple times beforehand if she wanted everything off and she vehemently nodded her head yes. And it was in her living that she didn't want a ventilator. Right after the funeral, we went to my grandma's house. At the end of the driveway was a doe. I walked out, got just 10 feet from it and got a few pictures. It wasn't afraid of me, and when I looked at it, I felt like my mom was checking on us. So I moved about two years ago to a new city. Ever since I moved in, I felt entire rooms go cold in minutes, and I felt shivers nobody else in the family has felt. I had to make all new friends and one of them is related to an experienced medium and she's also very well versed in ghosts. I know many people don't believe in Ouija boards and I do take them with a grain of salt. As a joke one day, I decided to mess around with one alone when I felt the shiver. I laughed off the fact I had contacted a 10 year old girl named Mona and called up my friend to talk about it. Mind you, I do have some strange experiences in my house like the doors in the bathroom opening on their own, or the sink turning on by itself. So I did think there was something in my house. My friend recommended I try the candle method, where you light a candle and ask yes or no questions. So I tried it in a room with no draft and closed vents. I'd ask a question and if the answer was yes, the flame would rapidly pop out and down and shake around. To the point where it was coming out of the jar, the candle was in. And the Mona I had contacted was supposedly communicating with me. 
To make a longer story short, I found out there are multiple, five that I know of, ghosts in my house, all related to each other from what I've gathered. Today, I thought I'd see if I could find anything on Ancestry, and I found some records with exact names. Now, their names are common. Nadine, Owen, Alexander, Opal, Mona. But I kind of freaked out because I thought I was nuts until I saw the names connected with info I had previously gathered. A friend of mine told me that they might connect more with me since I do enjoy older music, movies, and other media, and they might find it comforting. Some people might think it's BS, but I honestly believe it, and I'm just kind of looking for advice on how to coexist and help make the ghosts more comfortable. Another smaller thing I end this post is, I do an EVP session with Manoa, and in the recording, I swear I heard her say a name. And I got a few other friends to listen it to see if they heard anything without telling them. And they heard variations like Menorah or Moa, but it's generally the same as Noah. Friend's dad just died after the new year. Ten days ago he called me and asked if he could stay with me for a while. My family refused on account of religious restrictions but they allowed it when I offered to stay with him, and I did. The first night nothing happened as we talked well into the night. The second night I woke to my mother calling me. It took a while for me to catch up. I went back to sleep thinking it was in my dream, but it happened again the next night. I sat up straight and waited, nothing. I asked my friend the next morning and he confessed that this has been happening ever since his father died. He had been hearing his mother calling him only to find her asleep. He told his mother about it and she dismissed it as a figment of his imagination. Fortunately, one of his cousins who was at his house last month backed him by saying she heard her husband calling her at night for the three nights she stayed. She pointed out that the voice seemed to be coming from right outside the rooms they were sleeping in. The thing is, this sort of thing happened to me once years ago. I woke up in the dead of night to my father's voice calling me, only to have my father call me out from my parents' bedroom. This was when my mother warned me not to answer immediately, but wait to be called again. Apparently, this was because the voice always calls when we're half awake, enough to act, but not enough to question. I called my family and told them about the issue. They told me to return home pronto. But my friend had the please don't leave me look on his face, so I'm staying. I was told of precautions, but not solutions. I want to help him, but I don't know what to do. Growing up in my parents' home, I've had multiple experiences with the spirits. So has my entire family. Their house is an old Sears kit home built in 1932. My family moved in 1992 or 1993, can't remember exactly. I was two or three. Ever since moving in, we've had strange encounters. First one I remember is waking up in the middle of the night to go into the kitchen for a glass of water. And there was a see-through figure near the window by the stove. I tried rubbing my eyes to get adjusted in the dark, but the figure was still there just staring out the window. I ran back to my room and hid under the covers till morning. After waking up, I told my mum and brother what happened, and my brother stated he saw the same thing during the night. It terrified us. Ever since that encounter, I've become infatuated with ghosts. My brother, sister and I would sometimes sleep in my parents' bed. I'd wake up during the night and have a bad feeling of dread. Then I'd see him standing at the end of the bed watching me. He was tall pale, had brown eyes and shaggy brown hair. I saw the same man on multiple occasions, but only in my parents' room at night. He would never say anything, just stare at me. The thing is, my mom told me years later that each of us kids told her about seeing the same man. I still wonder to this day who he could be. My sister told us she would also see a woman and two children on different occasions, but myself and my brother never saw them. My mom also has experiences in her bedroom, but she never sees anyone. As soon as she'll lay down to sleep, the shades will move in the room. But as soon as she sits up to see what it is, it stops. The air vent isn't on. 
the windows aren't cracked open. It always happens when she's alone in the bedroom trying to sleep. Still happens to this day. My mom has asked my dad if it happens to him and he denies it. That's why she can't ever sleep in her bedroom alone. Side note, my dad's a firefighter, so he used to work 24 hour shifts and has over the years worked nights at other jobs. So on nights she'd sleep with one of Wood's kids or on the couch, it scares her that much. I was home all alone one day. I think I was in high school. I was sitting on my living room couch watching TV when I heard paper shuffling in our den. My mom's desk is in the den. I thought it was my cat, so I yelled for her to stop. The sound stopped for a second, but then started again, as if someone was shuffling through paperwork. I again yelled for her to stop, but it kept happening. I went to the den to see what she was doing, and she wasn't in there, which I thought was strange. I then had to use the bathroom. As I'm about to open the bathroom door, I peer to my right and there's my cat, sleeping on my bed. I turned cold. I would have seen her walk past me if she was in the den. I went back to the den cautiously and looked around. Nothing. Still, the only one home alone. Cat asleep. I sit back down on the couch again, start watching TV to get my mind off things, and once again, the sound starts. I decided to ask it to stop, and for some odd reason, it did. I've also seen half of a man's face in the den window staring back at me, but when I turned back to my left, no one was there. Still freaks me out to this day. He doesn't resemble the man I saw in my parents' room, so I'm not sure who I saw. The basement is also full of activity. Before the bathroom remodel, the shower curtain would try to get as close to your body as it could, but if you asked it to stop, it would. Freaking me out for the longest time. So glad when my parents finally got a shower door instead. One time, I went into the basement to grab a drink from the fridge, and as I headed upstairs, I heard my brother say my name. I looked over the stairwell and asked what? With no response and no brother in sight, I ran upstairs and my brother was in his room watching TV. Over the years, we've each heard our name called in different areas of the home. Turns out, no one there. Items will go missing and turn up days or months later in different spots than once placed. Someone will hear the basement door open and shuts, but it's locked and no one has come or gone. Items in the kitchen have fallen to the floor for no reason. There's cold spots throughout the home, especially in the basement and den. My sister is still too scared to go to the laundry room herself because she swears there's something watching her in the hall to get to the laundry room that had always been an eerie spot. It's a dark area where the furnace is and where we always kept the cat box. It just always feels as if someone's standing behind the furnace. From what my parents have told me, the person who originally owned the house died in it. I'm not sure what form and what year. There was also a deadly car crash in front of the house where the man's car went head on into the tree in the front yard. I've heard stories from friends that people see a man outside my front house at night walking along the sidewalk and then disappear. They've told me those stories even before I've ever mentioned anything about my parents' house being haunted. I'm just glad we've pretty much coexisted with the ghosts over the years with some frights here and there. My parents are getting ready to move after being there 26 years. It's going to be sad to see them move with all the good memories we've had, but I do wonder if the ghosts will haunt the new owners. It was early 2014. I was working nights, so on my days off, I'd be up late throughout the night. Around 2 or 3 in the morning, I'd be in my basement, chilling, watching TV or whatnot, when my cat would go crazy following something around on scene. She'd be meowing and running to different spots throughout the basement. This went on for a few nights. So one night, I decided to pull my camera out and start taking pictures once my cat started freaking out. Surprisingly, I caught orbs in multiple pictures. Once I saw an orb in a picture, I decided to communicate with it and it responded. I remember asking the spirit, if you're really a spirit, go by the bathroom door. I took a picture right after and there's the orb right on the bathroom door. Chills went straight through me. I kept communicating with the spirit for an hour or so and caught orbs throughout my basement. 
My cat went into my bedroom as if seeing something, but I only caught one orb in there. I tried recording a session of me speaking with the spirit, but got no response that way. After a few hours, my cat calmed down and all went back to normal. Even though I knew my childhood home was haunted, I truly believed this was my great grandma paying me a visit. I had recently at that time kept smelling her scent out of the blue and on that night, even I smelt her scent prior to all of this happening. Today, I smell her from time to time in my own home. I believe she just stops in to say hi and watches over me. From five years old up until 12 years old, I used to hear and see spirits. Our old apartment was haunted and all of us siblings were used to it growing up, but only realized it when we moved to a different house and all of the weird noises and voices and odd occurrences stopped. I remember all of us freaking out when I opened up with the conversation, do you guys remember when doors would shut without anyone doing it, nor any wind inside the house? Do you guys remember the stairs making sounds like someone was going up and down the stairs? That's when we all started sharing our own stories. Then we all realized that I was the one who experienced the most when I started telling them examples after examples. I'll share three memories that I still remember vividly. A quick visit. When I was five or six, I was seated on our couch getting ready for my regular doctor visits. My mom was a nurse and she takes health and wellness seriously. My mom was facing towards me, putting on my socks and I was facing the stairs. Our stairs at our old apartment were L-shaped and it cuts off as it goes past the ceiling. It creates a shadow around the area of it, cutting off past the ceiling. As my mom was putting on my socks, I remember pointing towards our stairs. I asked her who the old man standing over there was. My mom turned around and looked at the spot I was pointing at and she told me there was no one there. I was confused because I could see a man standing looking down at us. His face was bloody with a bloody cloth covering half his face. He had a beard and was staring at us. I remember not being scared but more curious. He didn't look malevolent. I kept pointing and my mom told me to describe what he looked like. After I told her what I was seeing, my mom told me that he reminded her of her uncle, who got assassinated while he was gardening at his home. He was shot in the face and died in the hospital, which was not too long ago, but before I was born. She confirmed the story years later and it still creeps me out whenever we talk about it. It needed a rest. Years later, maybe around 10, I was alone in my room. We had a bunk bed because I shared my room with my older brother. The bunk bed was made of metal and had a mesh design underneath the mattress. My brother's spot was at the bottom and whenever he sits on his bed, the metal mesh makes a squeaky or rusty sound. But he always drops down on his bed and never sits on it slowly, giving a quick squeaky sound. So hearing it on a daily basis, I'm familiar with that sound. One day, I was just chilling on my desk and my CD player stopped playing after playing the whole album. It was just dead silence. I was sketching something, so I wasn't really bothered by the silence. All of a sudden, I heard my brother's bunk bed make a squeaky sound, but it was very, very slow, like someone was pushing down or sitting down really slow. I immediately froze and I was trying to process what was happening. I started deducing in my mind, I'm alone. My brother is still in his ROTC, and there's no one else in the room beside me. When I realized that it must be something else, I gathered my nerves and told the ghost that I'm scared of ghosts, and I hope he, she, it doesn't show itself. The squeaking stopped, and I remember trembling. I decided it was the moment. I bolted out of the room, didn't even bother glancing towards the bed. I was legit scared and was screaming as I sprinted down the stairs. I told my parents that there's a ghost in the room and my parents told me that they don't exist and that it was just my imagination. Despite telling them every detail of the story to no avail, they simply reminded me that it must have been something natural like wood creaking or the wind or the neighbors. 
I'm 100% sure it was the bed. I know that creaking sound and it was very close. Not muffled like it was beyond the walls of our room or from the outside. It was right behind me. It was coming from our bunk bed. Also, how would it make that sound if it's not for someone or something to actually sit or lay on the bed? This memory still gives me the shivers. A gathering. My last memory of a ghost encounter was the year before we moved. I was 12 at this time and it happened in the middle of the night. It was an uncommon occurrence for me to wake up in the middle of the night. This particular night was the scariest night in my life and I get a weird feeling in my stomach whenever I think about it. It's not really anything big like Hollywood level scary, but the sheer terror that I felt an imprint in my memory. So I remember waking up in the middle of the night for some reason and I just stared at the ceiling trying to get back to sleep. I was probably half awake at this point. Then all of a sudden, I felt like there's someone right beside my bed, like a presence. So I'm on the top bunk of our bunk bed and I just felt someone was standing beside the bed. I remember my heart started beating fast and I immediately went fully awake and my body just got stiff from this uneasy feeling. Mind you, it wasn't a sleep paralysis episode because I could move and was actually comfortable when I woke up. So, I decided to gather my strength and look to my right because I really wanted to know if there was anyone beside my bed out of curiosity. As I looked to my right, I saw four figures wearing black, like funeral formal attire looking down on me. They were tall because even though I was on the top bunk, they were looking down. Their eyes were blurry, but they were anthropomorphic. I could tell that there were three males and one female. I stared right back at them, trying to make sense of what I'm seeing. As it finally clicked in my head that they're spirits or ghosts, I screamed and grabbed a pillow and placed it on top of my head as I pivoted away from them. I was crying and was purely terrified. I started praying and praying and hoping that they wouldn't touch me or come close to me. I remember repeating the Apostles' Creed, prayer for St. Michael, Hail Mary and Glory Be. I was raised Catholic. I started my new job at Will Rogers Airport. I say new job, but I was really just moved to a different airline and working in the same ramp agent position. Now, I have to tell you that I have a crippling fear of heights and my least favorite part of being a ramp agent is when I have to climb in the cargo bin on a rear loading plane because it's about 20 feet above the ground. This particular night was a strange mix of a few factors creating an uneasy feeling. The first ambient setting condition is it was raining. Not just light raining, but pouring rain with a few scattered lightning flashes and random power surges. Every now and then, we have dead bodies transported in the cargo bins. This was one of those occasions, and tonight was my lucky night apparently, because my manager told me I was throwing this plane. Throwing, meaning I was pulling the cargo out of the bin. It was the last plane for the night and there wasn't very much cargo beside the body. My coworker John pulled the ramp loader to the plane and raised it up so I could walk up the conveyor belt to enter the bin. About four other coworkers come over with a baggage tug for the cargo. I say to everyone in a louder than normal tone because the rain was loudly smacking the metal shell of the airplane, I hope you all are ready. I'm not trying to be in there all night. John laughed and said, don't worry about it. Maybe you can make a new friend in there, in reference to the body. I didn't think it was funny, but I chuckled and told him to shut up and let's get going. I climbed into the small and cramped space and sat in the bin as far from this human sized white cardboard box as I could. I pulled my phone out of my pocket to select a playlist to listen to while I threw the bin. I find a good one and I start working. The conveyor belt moves at a snail's pace and you have to wait until they scan each individual package so I can't just throw them as fast as I want to get out of there. About 10 minutes into it, I'm getting closer and closer to this box and my music stops playing. I've had earbuds that short out when they get wet, so in the front of my mind I automatically assume that rain somehow got on them and I just needed to shake a little water out of them, but they were bone dry. I check Spotify to see if it was a glitch or problem with the app, and I see I have an unread text. 
Did I get a notification and forgot in the midst of my rap fueled baggage handling? The way my phone is set up, when I get a message, it will tell you who it's from, but it won't display the message. You have to access them to read it. The message was from an unknown number, which was odd, because very few people have my number to begin with. I clicked the notification to read the message, and all it said was, hi. I sent a text back saying, uh, hey, who is this? My phone displayed that whoever sent the message saw mine immediately after it was sent. I waited and no response. I started my playlist back up and got back to my job. Shortly after, a crash of thunder that was so loud the plane shook made me jump at first, but I quickly rationalised it and returned to work. I noticed the conveyor belt was no longer moving. I yelled to John, what the hell's going on down there? Why did it stop? John replied, damn thing ran out of gas. We're going to take this load of cargo to drop off while we get another loader over here. Sit tight. I think to myself, where the fuck else am I going to go? About one minute later, it got cold. Like I could see my breath cold. I wrote it off as just a cold front and reach over for some stranger's luggage to lean on while I wait. As I look over for a bag to grab lightning went across the sky. And I saw a quick flash of a little boy, 11, maybe 12 years old, sitting on the white box. Staring at me with this eerily happy smile and his head turned slightly to the side. My heart sunk and I froze never taking my eyes off that box for what felt like hours. I was startled by the replacement conveyor belt starting up right next to the plane. I darted to the moving conveyor belt as fast as I could, trying to keep my balance and panic at the same time. I hit the ground and looked at John and said, Nope, I'm done. You're going to have to go in there. I didn't want to explain exactly what I saw, but John knew something scared me shitless. He asked me, What's wrong? Who is it? I stuttered and walked away before I could say anything. Then I got a new text message notification that I heard loud and clear this time. A response from the unknown sender saying, It's your new friend. 